Now, we gotta talk about Apex now. <sighs> gotta clock into work, guys. You know how it is. Alright. Not down to review SSG. They're gonna get too strong. Are they? I don't know. I saw a clip of them getting 1v3 the other day in scrims. Holy shit. Darwin, are you good? I feel bad. He was struggling to get up. He didn't take into account that the cat, uh, that the desk was raised. I almost never raised it, so... I don't know how he's gonna get down, though. Eh, he'll figure it out, right? Do we do TSM? Do we do Alliance? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking one of those two. And by no means this is like shade to TSM. Every team I think you can find something to be critical of. Even the ones that are doing really well. I've kind of always thought that TSM's 3v3ing was really... Kind of like, for how good they are as a team... I've always thought their 3v3 wasn't that great. It felt more... Every time I've watched them, it felt more like... Three individually very good players doing really well in the roles that they're supposed to, as opposed to, like, a team fully fighting together, if that makes sense. So, yeah. They can only do, like... Because, again, I want this one today to be a little bit shorter. All right. It looks like Alliance. Hashtag all fam. All right. So, a little bit of preliminary on Alliance. If you watched any of the main broadcast, you know I'm an Alliance fan. I'm an Alliance simp. I share the heartbreak that everyone does. Because I feel like this roster always looks so fucking good. But... When it comes to finals, even like throughout the whole, like every tournament, I don't think they've ever had like a slow start to any tourney. They've always been like group stage demons and that generally carries over in the later brackets. But for whatever reason, they can't ever seem to bring it to a close in uh, finals as far as I'm, I'm remembering. Because yeah, their best finish being fifth, which is not bad. Fifth is certainly something you can be proud of. But if, as you can see here, like they make every single one and they just end up falling short. And it's sad to see because obviously I think, I think a lot of people are a fan of this team and we all want to see them do well. Sometimes the closer you get to winning, the harder it can be. Hold on, my brother sent me this today. This is actually, this is a good reason to pause the video. I promise you. Look at this. This is a picture of none other than yours fucking truly locked the fuck in on the Super Nintendo. I was probably gonna tweet this picture yesterday. My brother sent me this today and it made me, uh, made me tear up a little bit. What was I playing? Probably like Mario or some shit. It's probably Super Mario. That is a yes. That is a Super Nintendo control. I, should, <laughs> I was locked in, bro. Oh, dude! If you look close, I'm kind of almost. I'm about to start clawing that bitch too. And I had like, yeah, dude. Look at the drip, bro. I was. What happened? You know what I'm saying? I was probably gonna. Yeah. Anyways, I was gonna tweet this picture probably sometime tomorrow. Uh, that this picture made me smile. Locked in since the very beginning, baby. All right, I'm sorry. It's actually like my brain is not built to work lands when it comes to how like analytical I want to be. There's so much shit going on. It's so hard to like keep track of like where teams are going and stuff. I don't remember. Did they get lightning rod here? I don't. I, I didn't get a chance to see where Alliance is landing. Or are they command center? Are they just command center? Okay, yeah, they are just command center. All right, cool. Command center is not the greatest POI. It's been nerfed a little bit. It's not horrible, but it's it's a little weird. Initially, you heard Hawk is instantly uh, calming to find evac towers. I'm not familiar with this POI's loot table and if you're likely to find one there. But obviously evac towers go a little bit crazy because of the massive rotate you can do. The little uh, launch, the cannon hole. So, we'll see how their rotates look. If we, if, we, if we can get the back buildings, it's fucking huge. If we can get three... Yeah, I think we aim for three here. Three is really good. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm moving. I'm 2-2 right now. Hold on. Um, is there a way to... Oh, right, ALGS. There we go. I want to I wanna pull up the zone just to see, like, what the first zone would look like, you know, type shit. Um, game one. Where's finals? I just want finals. Overview finals. Um, I, this is the first team I'm, I'm reviewing. And it'll be the only team I reviewed tonight. We'll do more in the coming days. Um... And then obviously anything you miss will be on YouTube. I did throw out a new video, even, by the way, recently. Even though it's just a patch notes review, it's nothing crazy. If you need a good at sleeping material. What the hell's uh Can we look at map here? I've honestly never used the ALGS side of this. That's how fucking stupid I am. And right side click replay analysis for each game. Okay, I wasn't sure if there was... There we go. Good comms. I feel like every time I look at that side, it changes. That's why. It's like weird to me. Okay. So this doobie zone one. I don't think they had a console to play off of. Sox is saying he thinks it's... I think he said it was south pylon zone? Let me see. I don't want to do all the rings just yet. I kind of want to... I want to look at it from like what they're looking at. You know what I mean? 
Eye on them, stealth me. They got zone. Yeah, pile on barometer ish. Go. Yep. So I'm guessing they want to go. I'm guessing they want to go somewhere around here. Is what they're what they're shooting for? Obviously, you have the pylon team. You have literally all of these teams have extreme prio to pylon. I mean, you got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I wouldn't count them actually. We'll count this as one, seven, eight. You got about eight teams with prio ahead of you if you don't find a balloon. That number changes definitely if they find a balloon, but we'll see. The reason I was talking about how many teams will have prio, and this is kind of where I'm curious. Well, again, going forward, watching this, if their macro is bad because of lack of experience from this POI, right? Like in Command Center, you think like it's a pretty center map POI, right? Obviously, if you get an evac tower, it's great. But even then, like there's still, I mean, you saw me count like eight teams ahead of them that technically will have prio over them. At that point, like it's sometimes not even worth going early. And I'm curious to see because the reason I'm saying that is, or every game is a case by case basis, is if you can get a prio spot, either that being like where you think the game is literally going to end or just a prio spot of where you're going to exist for several zones and then you can get a strong rotate out of that spot. I also like to call prio spots as well. If you can get any of those, then yes, you should cut your loot, try to rotate early and play with uh, like less loot. But generally speaking, if you can't get a, any of like those really, really good spots, I think it's a little bit better to just play for later. Play for a uh, late game, do the PvE, do the Evo shit. Because if you can approach the first zone with purple armors, or your, at least your first fight with purple armors, most of the time, you'll be at a slight advantage. So that's why I'm I'm gonna be looking to see what their macro looks like overall. Like, do they do they suffer because of lack of Evo? Do they die just because of lack of loot in general? All that type of stuff. Could they benefit from a slower playstyle? Let's go 07. Ooh. We don't root for Nasky here, man. Never. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. They got not one, but two. Oh, you're right. I was, I was gonna say, like, what the hell is that? Good comes, good comes. Okay. Sorry. Alright, there we go. That rotate is so disgusting. I'm not a big fan of tree. Yeah, but we'll see. I kind of, yeah, I kind of like the buildings a little bit more. Not this building. This building is ass if you don't have a catalyst. Also, not a fan of jamming into pylon, but we'll see where they end up going. Okay, so they're op they are opting for tree. Yeah, it's not bad a spot to hold for now to give them a better sight of what's going in for or what's going to be going on further up. Like you can live here, but the problem is leaving here. It should be noted like that. Take a lot of things with a grain of salt. In a finals lobby, you don't really have you don't have too many options of what you can do, right? This is, I mean, this is where it all comes together. This is where it all matters. But I do want to note that 18 squads left is, even though it's only two squads, that is a huge thing in comp. So there is generally going to be a little bit more room available than not. But I don't like this tree spot because it's just, it's it's really easy to hold. My problem is leaving here. They do have an evac tower, which is good. But generally speaking, like teams, I mean, like you still have to look at like all these teams still have an angle on here right like you're good to survive here but what's the gameplay afterwards what does that look like I and mean, generally i don't i can't imagine like i don't recall seeing too many teams ever win pylon zones from the tree here even before it was pylon like when it was antenna i mean it was even worse in antenna i think but generally speaking not a huge fan of this spot again it is final zone you kind of just have to take what you can get and you got to make it work but this isn't what i would want to what i would call i think from the get-go i think it's a good stepping stone but we'll see okay yeah. Seems like they're, they're opting to rat. Although, if they're gonna rat, I don't like this barrel up here. <laughs> kind of makes it really obvious that they're still that they're here, right? I would personally would probably move this barrel down here. There's no need for it to be up here. I'd probably move it like here some, somewhere. Because I am speeding it up so you might not have ca caught it, but I'll just say that they are gonna rat it. But that makes it a little obvious. Like that sticks out. You could see that. You'll see that caustic barrel from there pretty easily. I'm gonna slow it down just a bit, just to hear the comms a bit, and then we'll speed it up when when they have everything fully done. Okay, you hear the call? 
Oh yeah, if someone lands on us, they usually either die, you just smoke your west effects, or the building team can shoot us. Yeah, just bang ult instantly. I'm gonna pop hound and I'm probably gonna swing your smoke. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you heard what? So you heard uh, Hawkus. He did say we're gonna chill here for a couple. We're gonna chill here for like three to four zones. Which again, think back to what I was saying earlier. Generally, you don't want to cut loot and go early unless you can play from a spot for three to four zones. And even if it's not the last spot, it's a spot that you can continue to rotate from afterward. Maybe they see this tree differently. Maybe they've had different successes from this tree. I don't personally like it, but we'll see. Again, we'll see how it works. Thank you. That will speed it up a little bit because they will be sitting here. I think for a little bit. I'm gonna try to speed it up a bit. Otherwise, we'll be here literally all fucking night. Okay. So they have next zone. This isn't... Ultimately, it's not that bad of a spot for being like... Again, like having like 7th, 8th prior on zone. But again, like I said, I don't see teams have a lot of success from here. I feel like it's it's a good spot to survive for a little bit, but then everyone decides, holy shit. I shouldn't... Wait. I actually didn't... It's kind of hard to pay attention to these things when you're actually like actively in the arena watching. I didn't realize this shit was as AP as it was. Zone 3? 12 squads left in pylon zone is a little crazy. That's actually like unironically looking like scrims. So scrims are realistic, let's go! Scrim results matter! I'm just gonna throw a frag on the door. And then we just get the building, okay? to be aware of these teams. Yeah, we water. I'm watching out for We walk in with zone and gate hit the whole north side. We walk in with zone, gate hit the whole north side. Generally don't like that plan. Not saying like this one in particular is bad, but like if you have to get into a spot where you have to walk in a zone, walk in with zone, yeah, things can get hairy very quickly. Um, not saying it's like a poorly called plan from Hawkus. This is just this is just what my gripe is with this spot. It's again, it's a spot where you exist, but you're kind of later on down the game, you're kind of living on a prayer. There aren't too many. I don't think there are any end zones that end right on the tree. Maybe there are newer ones that maybe I'm not familiar with, but. It's just not a it's not a common spot that where the games end if they even can. So it's just like you're kind of living on a prayer, which is why I don't like it. What spot would you rather they went to? That's the other flip side is I do like that they didn't jam into pylon. I think jamming into pylon, unless you're one of those teams in the tournament that is just fucking you're just there, you're shitting on everyone, you're confident, you know you're not going to lose a team fight. Jamming into pylon is okay, even then I'll still avoid it. But sometimes that's what you have to do. I'd have to see it more from Hawks's, uh, or not Hawks's, um, yeah, from Hawks's POV, because I think when we flew and we saw it from effects POV, it's really hard to say, like, ideally, I, th I mean, ideal, in an ideal world, again, I don't know what's, like, open, necessarily, I couldn't, because Hawks is the one that's doing all the scouting, ideally, um, you want to, I guess we can go to, like, when they were rotating, not that it matters, because, you know, we can only go off the information that they know, I think it only makes sense to do that, okay, so this is about the time they flew in, so they got this building, right, it's a little bit tough um, because, again, I don't. I'm not a fan of, of of slamming into pylon. I think it's really hard to play from because you're just stacking on a bunch of a lot of teams and everyone else is looking. Generally speaking, if it's a pylon zone, you want one of these three. Obviously, the one that they have now is not good because Hawkus does call that it's going to be it's going to end South Pylon, which is somewhere down here. And he was right; it actually did end South Pylon. <sighs> it's tough to say, right? This could go a diff couple different ways. From when they came in, there really isn't any a better spot to play. That technically that is closer to the end zone. There is a case to be made that they could have gone all the way around and played outside this way. I think playing for this is really, really strong. If you can hold it, if it's a little hard to hold early game, but once like close zone two, zone three, playing out here is really fucking strong. It's just really difficult. And they don't they had no way to know that it was a, like I'm not saying they should have done this. I'm just saying that they had no way to know that it was going to be free, right? Because if you are Alliance and you make this rotate, right? You go down this way, and then all of a sudden you see a team playing up here, which is not uncommon. All of a sudden you're like, fuck, well, now we have to go back, right? So then they go back, and then by that time, another team probably is occupying this, and all of a sudden their entire rotate is fucked. So, not saying they should have done that. I do think it is a potential play. Generally speaking, it's, it's really hard when you only have, like... Again, when you're, like, the eighth team for private spot, right? It's just going to be really hard for you to pick a spot. The tree works... But if they survive this rotate, I'll be very surprised. That's all I'm saying. I like Pylon way better than I liked Antenna. Propaganda? I think it still suffers from a lot of the problems that Antenna had. But it's still- I think it's overall better. I think Pylon is healthier for the map, but it's- It still has some of the same problems. I mean, this is why I don't like this spot. There's no gameplay after the tree. 
I'm here for the Noctilus album review soon-ish. Probably in a couple hours. Probably in a couple hours, but... I... Believe me when I say that is what I am most excited for. Um, okay. Pretty much everything of what I just said is exactly why I don't like that spot. There's just no game plan afterward, right? Everyone knows you're there. And everyone that has a free chance to shoot, which is mostly this, this team right here, they shoot you for free. There's no... No one's punishing them for it, because they can't. So it's, it's kind of tough. Which is why I just don't generally don't like that. Again. I've talked with this a lot with my team as well. I'm generally more in favor of like, look, even if there is a team that's here, I'm generally more in favor of a team trying to come out here and like, and work with the other teams. If there's a team here, that means there's almost always going to be a team somewhere over here. Okay? So I'm generally more in favor of like, in like having control of what happens in the game. Right? When you play this spot, you don't have control. You just don't. This spot obviously plays a lot more to the end game. It just does a lot more for you. You have more control of your own, like, fate. Uh, this spot, again, doesn't. And I don't like those spots where you don't have control of your fate. If you, keep, if you go back to what I said in the beginning of this game, exactly, I said, if you're going to rotate early, it has to either be for a prio spot where the zone ends. So, like, let's say, you know, if they were able to get this, this little um, compound here. It needs to be either for the, a spot where the game ends, or it needs to be for a spot where you can convert your next rotate to from pretty freely. And what I mean by that is something like this, right? Playing from here. The, the zone's obviously not going to end here, but you can play from here into the next spot. That's just me, though. If you played on the edge, wait, so you're essentially trying to pinch teams if you're playing edge? Yes, absolutely. The, the, the funny thing about Battle Royales is the ideal scenario is that you never actually fight anyone. The ideal scenario is that you push people into each other to the point where they all just die around you. Obviously, if you can get whatever kills you can, you know, uh, sniping kills left and right, you know, grabbing, trying to yoink kills, that's great. But ideally, <laughs> you're not trying to fight anyone. Do you think it would be better for lines to just checkpoint into that tree slash truck earlier? If they had gotten there faster? Not really. If that's what you mean. It doesn't... Just I just think that spot is just very passive. Just It's something I've referred to in the past as a complacent spot on my VOD reviews, and I think that's that spot is 100% one of them. Like, yeah, you live there. You survive for a couple zones, but you don't ever actually end up doing anything. Again, a lot of the advice I give is I try... Obviously, this is just comp, right? But a lot of the I try to boil it down so it's advice that applies to all of the game because a lot of these things do apply to the whole game. And when you're looking, when you're in a spot that you're uncomfortable with, there's a lot of teams around you. There's one thing that you want to when you want to look for a rotate. You want to kind of like I'm trying to think of an easy way to say this. You kind of want to like assess the noise level around you. If there's nothing happening, that means everyone is just waiting and looking around for someone to do something. So in that case, and generally that's a lot of the time in comp, that is what happens, is people won't move until the zone tells them to, because everyone else is just waiting for everyone else to move, right? When you hear just a lot of shit going on, a lot of fucking gunfire, a lot of nades going off, utility being used, that's generally your case, that's, that's a good time for you to be like, hey, maybe no one's looking at us, we could probably move and rotate. So you kind of like literally want to assess the noise level around you when you're in a spot like that. Let's go back. I, I want to go back and listen to Hawkins a little bit. Bring, bring, bring. I'm Central R3. I need to land you up. I'm Sultan right now. I got a problem. I guess. I just need a Hamlet and I'm chilling. Okay. My guns are 50 doo doo. Alright, that's two X here. Good. Bring in the camp. I got another balloon. Always nice. better than Iron Sense. That's a deep knock button. I'm saving the uh, UAVs here and get it right before we fly, okay? Back in here. Okay, so they did find another one. Guild, I don't know, man. Maybe you guys need better looting practices when you land here. I don't know, bro. Yep, I got Hamlet. Yes. I'm super good on guns. I'm almost with you. We're going to the four because the fighter finished. Yeah, okay. I'm going to kill I need ammo. Getting taking more cells. Yes, uh, I'm telling you how to get another shit. I, hey, look. Okay, okay, finish, I didn't doubt you fully. Because I've never actually landed here. I have no idea. My team has never landed here. What's that coach's name? His name is Noth. He was a. Um, if you watched old Apex. Uh, comp, he was part of the team Flavor of the Month, which is one of the longest standing rosters the game has seen for a while in EU. It was Noth, Pierre, and uh, struggling to remember the last guy's name. But now Noth is their coach. Pierre is actually the team manager. Um, I don't remember. Who is there? Any, any old Apex heads? Okay. Did 
didn't really hear like a full on calm. Maybe I just was skipping around to it too late. Okay, so he wants the bunker. Not bad effect, not bad. That was close. I thought he was gonna fumble that. That's a huge rotate. Now this is one where they actually might get a lot more prior than everyone else. I'm trying to remember exactly where this game ended. This is one of the first like north pad zones I feel like we had. Was this even north pad or did it end? All oh, rings. Sorry, spoiler. Okay, yeah, this was the north pad. All of like the group stage and everything is, is blending together, so I'm forgetting these things. Personally, love north pad zones. I don't know about you guys, but I I love these because you can see there's just so much room to play, and I think it really displays a strong level of macro for a lot of these teams. Um, if you watch them like truly move through an entire zone of these, so again, north pad zones. My I generally also really like because my team is really good at playing them. Generally, we do well. Either we get a lot of KP or uh, end up getting pretty high placements or a little bit of both. So, again, they're playing, um, the exact spot they're playing is this bunker right here. Um, again, one of those complacent spots. It's great to exist in. It doesn't do anything to further your game, though. You're not really poking at people. It's very hard to do so from here. So you're not farming Evo. You're not really enforcing your the area that you're playing in anywhere around you it's like you're not you know shoving teams around you're not saying hey this is my spot don't come here you can't really do that from this spot so um again great for existing it's just makes and like you can make it work it's just one of those spots where you really have to go really really hard in the next few zones to make something out of it where there isn't normally anything so you might be like well like, what, what spot would you play man well Great question, let me tell you. Um, personally, I mean, maybe I shouldn't be giving all the sauce, but you know, hey, we're somewhat of a free agent at the moment. Um, this spot's really good. These buildings are really good. I would avoid uh, armories. I think armories are a huge bait from prior seasons. In prior seasons, people played armory, one, because you could get a shit ton of loot from it, right, from actually doing it and getting all the, the robots to drop a shit ton of ammo, um, all the bins and whatnot, so... Uh, on top of that, you got the launch pad that you could get a free uh, redeploy from, right? That's no longer the case with the armories. You don't get a lot of loot. You get only what's in the bins, and there's no launch pad in there. So what that means is <laughs> it's really bad now. So I see a lot of teams take this. It's not good. I've yelled at my team multiple times for doing it because it's all full body swings. It's impossible to ever like trade from there. Don't take armories. If you can help it, if it's like the last ditch effort, it's the only place you can play, sure. Armories are generally really bad. Don't go for them. So I don't like their spot here. Did they actually die here? Hold on. I, I didn't think they, I thought they were going to get the reset. Let me go back then. Honestly, like... No reason not for effect to full heal there. But at the same time, I kind of get it. Like, he probably didn't expect enemy to keep looking there. I think he tried to fumble with enemy's inherent, like, timing of watching. He, enemy probably, he probably thought that enemy stopped looking at him because he was full healing behind the rock. Um... Enemy just <laughs> hard dialed in. The reality is, enemy. This is probably the first person enemy was able to shoot at for uh, quite some time. And generally, when that happens, you just sit there and keep looking at them. See, Jayhawk. Most people wouldn't know that, man. When you make the comms. When you, when you compliment the coaching, most people forget these things, man. You thought I know you're talking to Angel. Okay, wow. That's actually like, okay. Kind of giga chat from DSG here. They were, I think they were, they were just holding, I want to see exactly where they were holding. It's kind of hard to tell from his POV. They were holding, um, I could just kill by a DSG enemy. Yeah, okay, so we're about here. Okay, this is kind of what I expected. I expected one of them to be up here, kind of like while they're watching. Um, let's go back. Actually, look at this. Okay. So you have to think 
because I think there's I, I wanted to say this earlier. This isn't like hindsight. This is what I thought in the moment, but I just didn't say anything. You're shooting at somebody right here, right? I, it's hard to see here, but he's like he's like here ish. Okay. You also are there are also shots coming from here. When you see this kind of situation in front of you, that means this team is trying to do some shit to you, right? Um, that means they're not just like poking at you to just try to like get some damage off. They are, their intent is to kill you or try to get a pick on you. So I'm surprised Effect didn't see this, or maybe Hawkins didn't see this, and they didn't call them back to like just play their spot, right? Because this is, this is very obvious that this team is trying to fuck with you. And you have to play much more safe, much safer than that. Um, Teal, I think for the same exact reason I've just been saying, I think it's because they disrespected the push. They didn't expect it. I think that this is their gas right here, though. Not the one that- not the second one that goes off, I think this first one is. Yeah, I think this is their gas- yeah, that, that's their gas. So they did. I a little bit of, again. Alliance did disrespect their surroundings, but not in a good way. <laughs> not in the way DSG did. I think that was just very like again. We go back very quickly. Uh very quickly to what I was talking about. Uh several different things to talk about there. Not the greatest spot. Very complacent. You have to, like, again, if you look at uh, Effect, he had to go really far out to get anything done. And then just a lot of, excuse me, disrespect from his, uh, from his, uh, from the teams around him. I think in EU, like, here's the thing. That play in old lands, in years ago lands, would be considered brain dead push, yada yada this, yada that, right? But we're in a new wave of Apex where people can get away with AP things. And DSG is definitely one of those teams where if they have you in their sights, you need to respect it. Like, and by that, I mean, like, you don't obviously want to flop over and just die, but you have to think there's a chance at any given time that this team is going to push me. <laughs> that is just like, that is like the DSG effect. I'm sure a lot of people in EU feel that with away with Aurora as well, right? So very surprising. I, I feel like a lot of the basics were forgotten there. Again, first off, I don't like the spot they played at all. But second... I just don't think they, they do, they, they didn't respect the area around them enough. They need to stop, they need to stop gaining a spot and then just thinking they can sit there for a little bit, man. We don't, it's not the level of Apex we're at anymore. At least not with those particular spots, right? Okay, Alliance again. Um, this is also like, I do want to say, obviously one of the reasons I think, like one of the reasons inherently that a team underperforms is definitely when they don't have their POIs. Um, Obviously, Alliance didn't with DSG in the lobby, and uh, I'm trying to think who else was there that took their spots. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, it's gonna be. It's one of those situations where it's like, dude, like I respect that they don't want to gamble their tourney on um, contest, especially because I don't think they contest very. I think DSG generally wins those. It is tough. So like, little sympathy goes out to them. Trust me, I know what it's like to lose a POI. <laughs> Hurts, but. I think I think there could be more done here. I think there could be more done. I, I think their early, their early game macro is just is kind of what's killing them a little bit, at least in the first two games. Something I always reiterate to people, especially people that I coach, and this go, again this goes out to everyone that plays and watches and I, either likes to scrim, watches scrims, or even likes to play just like ranked. Um, a lot of your mistakes, generally speaking, will happen. Like even if you die zones three and four or even further on, a lot of your mistakes that you make that actually end up making you lose the game happen between zones 1 and 3. And most people, even this far along in Apex, most people don't realize that. I'm not saying this, I'm not saying this to necessarily harp on Alliance, but I think there's should be, there should be a decent amount of due diligence done from all teams to understand like the really hard zones across both maps that like have that have repeat winners or repeat point producers you should know how they play it 
right? If that makes sense, you should you should try to have some semblance of an idea of what they do, so you can kind of replicate that if you happen to be in that situation, or if you're in a zone like even if they were thermal and they were still skywish trials. Obviously, they have their own thoughts of what they normally do. They have their own game plan, but it's still good to know what the winning team does because then you know what spot to look for when the opportunity opens up and presents itself for you to actually win. Which place left? But anyways, yes. I did literally predict them because they were at Skywars Trials and I thought they would do well because of that. Unfortunately, if you don't land at Skywars Trials and you don't know how to play the zones, they actually are pretty hard. Even if you land there. Unless, again, unless you know how to play it. I'm trying to listen to a zone call. I mean, granted, it's dome. You're not playing any zone calls from dome, especially not this tourney. Okay, I like that game plan. Again, they're not going to get any prior spots from dome, so you generally want to play a little bit slower. You want to play for Evo, you want to play for getting your economy up, you know, hitting uh, multiple crafters if you can, stuff like that. I dropped a gold hammer again, like a. Oh fuck. Dodge is probably no, leaving. Take the, take the mobby. Okay, Hackers? Yeah, where is it? Yeah. Speed up a little bit. Go back. I'll be... Okay. Uh, I'm serious. Yeah, I'll give us all the fuck. I'm dropping heavy. I'll give you over here. Good. Alright, let's move for Dodge. Dodge can you be? Yep. Let's wrap around here. We take the high ground fucking there, okay? Yep. Uh. Yeah, Harvester. Yeah. Okay, Cheers. Yeah. I see him over here. Yep. Yeah. We'll take the high ground fucking there, Dodge. We just need to get the loose so we before we do anything. Yep. Go on that side. I'm not showing myself. God, I wish I could. One four, and it's fucking mm -hmm. Imagine a world where you can watch VODs. Where you can like download replays and watch VODs like in game. Yeah, imagine a, a replay system where we could like have full control. Like we could actually walk, like fly around, like no clip around and see everything that's going on. That'd be sick. That actually would be insanely game changing. Didn't get a solo this year, Loki. Press, hey man. There's one thing I've learned in my long, long life, relatively speaking. Can't always be the rock star. Unless you're knocked loose. I'm zipping too hard on this stream. But you can't always be the rock star. This is the... Uh, I'm trying to remember, this is the Climatizer zone, I think? Landslide? This doesn't look like a landslide zone based off their map. Valverine FPS, the APAC GOAT, right? The APAC GOAT with uh, some of the uh, in most interesting takes on the timeline, let's put it that way. Yeah. Double tap exists, maybe no. Even like even the current scout. The current scout kills really fast. People people are forgetting. Everyone's very hemlock pilled now. But the scout is really fucking good still. The problem okay, uh, I'm gonna touch on this very briefly. A lot of the un the, the unwritten like rule on what DMR weapons are good and when people use them, I'm gonna let you in on some little sauce here. Um it depends on the guns that are the guns that are in that same category that are also really good. So, for example, when everybody was using Scout, what gun was everyone also using? R9. Swapping from a Scout to R9 later in the game, if you don't already have one yourself, was very fucking easy. Right? So, right now, the Scout is still really good. The problem is, most people are not running light weapons, because R3 is kind of ass. R9 is pretty ass. Alternator Disruptor is not bad. Ari's with, uh, with this attachment's not horrible, but no one's really running it, right? So running a scout, it's not going to be, eventually it's not, you're not going to be able to convert that gun very quickly on a whim when you need to. You know, running um, something as simple as, uh, as running a, what the fuck's it called? 3030 repeater, even in this current meta, obviously not the most meta weapon right now, but it's still solid, especially because you can convert it to a prowler or you can convert it to a hemlock with the mag later on down the line. Right. 30 is still not bad, but a, a lot of the times, the guns that are in meta, there's a reason why people will also use the DMR of that same exact class. And it's sometimes just because it's strong, sometimes it's just really easy to swap. Yep. And that matters a lot, especially for controller players, you know? Late, late game, controller player, you're trying to drop a scout for an R9, and you already have the mag, which is 
Arguably the most important part. Not arguably, it just absolutely is. That's a very fast swap. You don't even have to scroll down and click on shit. You just swap and you can go. So, there again, a lot of the game... It's good to challenge the way a lot of the game is played. But you need to take you need to take into account like how it actually feels in game as well. It's not all just the game is not all played on paper. Let's hear what, what they need to do next. Um, yeah, not in a great spot. Obviously, they do have purple, which is nice to see. Again, I think uh, them. I mean, they ha when you're in dome, you are kind of forced to play a little bit slower. Okay, it doesn't look like we're gonna get the zone for this one, but that's fine. Um, yeah, we need to get the and wipe everything. What's up, Jumbo? Right. Or left side, like we just need to get into the lowground later. Who's the team with shells right now? Okay. Cheers. Uh, yeah, wait, one guy's sitting though. I, still guy guy. 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 I have to imagine there's some way they can do this, but like on the back end, I feel like if they got like if the observers or whoever's in control of these, the actual like land observing like faces and stuff, I wish they could be provided a list of all of the IGLs and just have them make sure they're always on the IGL POV. And then, like, swapping a little bit back and forth when other shit's happening. Just because of stuff like this, like, you know, when if you're an Alliance fan and you're watching Hawkus fucking spit bars right now about what to do next, it kind of sucks when you can't see what he's doing, right? What he's pinging, what he's talking about. Because the effect's probably also opening up his map. But again, you don't see that, right? You don't see when they open up their inventory and their map on this on this POV. Uh, so, yeah, we just walk in fucking uh, from the fence, gate keep fragments, and then we send the corner, and then we three all of the whole side here. We fight the whole side. All right. So he's pinging a lot of shit, but I cannot tell. He's pinging shit 400 meters away. I can't see what he's doing. I do like the amount of planning going into it. I mean, it sounds solid, but we'll see how it plays out. We're twitching for every player land? I have no idea how it works, man. I'm not the person to ask for that. <laughs> I'm sure they've probably thought of everything. The people behind the scenes work a lot harder than most people give them credit for. Um, there's a lot of bullshit. Go. Guys, back up and watch this. In normal speed. Did you just say I smoked him without smoking them? Don't know about that. Don't really know what that bangle is accomplishing. Maybe to get that team off the height. Not a good fight. This is not a good fight. This is rough, man. I'm looking at this map. There's no way they survived this. This is just like... Wow, really good nades, holy shit. That's gotta be that APAC coordination, because I feel like NA teams would... I feel like a lot of NA teams just eat their grenades. Instead of actually carefully planning them. It is reject. Or reject again. No idea how you're supposed to say it. Do you see them? You see them? Bro. Can we fucking kill them? Yes, go for the ship. Okay, one second. I, I need the battle first. You guys go for the ship. They're here. They're here behind yeah, you. Yeah, we need to walk up. You want to swing through the fucking gas? Just fuck them. We can maybe wait 10 seconds off. We can't do it. We can't do it. We gotta make I'm not really saying much because I'm kind of just waiting to see how it ends because I don't think they survived this rotate. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't think they survived this rotate. And also, think back to the last couple games where I was saying most of the mistakes you make are zones one to three. At this point, Everything is kind of moot. Like, they gotta just make the best of what they can. But it's not like. There's not really a reason to go like too crazy in depth on this because. There's a lot more. There's a lot more to say from zones one to three about what happened than here. Yeah. About, about the way I expected it to go. <laughs> 
Yeah. No, Rose, we're not we're not on a match point yet. This is the game I think SSG won. Oh no, this is the game that SSG threw. They were on height, LG was down here exactly where Akis is, and somehow they lost that fight. Frex, if you're still in here, like bro, I need you to get on the mic right now and tell me what the fuck happened in this game. Cause I was literally in the green room, I'm, I think I was in the green room, I don't know, I was somewhere and I was like, dude, there's no way SSG loses right, this, right? Like, surely they don't throw. And SSG threw. There is no situation, uh, we don't have to watch the rest of this, but there's no situation where this team on height and there's a team down low. I don't even need to say, I, I, I don't even need to say more. Um, granted, I'll give them a slight benefit of the doubt. Um, LG had more utility available than SSG did, but utility is good. Don't get me wrong, but so is also playing ultimate height. <laughs> playing ultimate height is also really fucking good in Apex. Also, Bronzy, don't fucking lie to me, man. Barely ever in here. You know how I know you're barely ever in here? Because <laughs> I barely ever stream. Checkmate, idiot. Yeah, this is yep, the left side of the map here. Actually, I'm ammo. The Can't wait for Bronzy to take notes on everything I say, go back to his stream, regurgitate it word for word, and then they go, wow, so smart. I'm seeing Bronzy, how have you been? How's life? I look up to you? <laughs> yeah, you fucking do. You're like 4'11. Um, I wish this replay would work, because I really want to talk about the zones 1 to 3. <clears throat> Sorry, Bronzy. I, I love you, man. I love you, man. Don't hate me, man. Yeah, I don't like this. This is the one part I think they really fuck up. Right here. I don't remember... Oh, shit. One team in the train. One team high ground FP. Yeah, it's holding hard. Um, yeah, we need to get the low ground and wipe everything. Probably right side. Right. Or left side. Like, we just need to get into the low ground later. Who's the team with shells right now? Okay. Train. I, okay, so a lot of, I will talk a little bit about this game. A lot of it's going to be speculative because I don't know, I don't have the full information ahead in front of me, but I'll talk about like, because obviously on, on Stormpoint, they were playing really fast. World's Edge, they have to play a little bit slower because they're playing Dome. Do I play Apex? Uh, unfortunately, a lot. Yes. Um, anyways. So. I will talk about what it means to be in this a team in this situation and how to kind of like properly play it. Not saying they, I don't want to sound like I'm being mean, but they didn't play very well. Um, but also, without throwing too much shade, I don't know what their map looks like. I don't know what's available to them um, in terms of the main thing I'm thinking of is man scans. So they need more when you're playing really late for zone like this. And this is a general rule of thumb that you guys can play in your own games and your own scrims that you might play in, tourneys, whatever. When you're playing slow and you're trying to rotate and you want to rotate, you need to do it with information. Obviously, right now they did hit zone. They know where zone's going to end, but generally if you're a comp player, at least at this level, you already know where the zone's ending, more or less. <clears throat> the big one, though, I, and again, I don't know because I can't see their map. I don't know what was available this game. The big one, though, is if you can, is to hit a man scan. Obviously, Hound is very meta right now. Hitting a man scan, and sometimes it's more important to, to prioritize man scans than it is to prioritize console scans. The knowing where the ring is going to end is great, sure, but knowing where you can play is, in my opinion, arguably way better. And this is something I've been preaching since, like, since the class changes. And since uh, the realm days when I was doing a lot of coaching for people uh, for free, this is something I'm a huge proponent of. Like, if you can, if you're playing late, and you can hit a man scan, and you have Valk or you have um, Evac Towers, making a play for a spot that you know is a hundred percent open with man scan is so much better than prioritizing ring console again. This is why I'm trying to say, like, no shade to Lions. I don't know if they had the options. I can't see their map and what they're looking at. Maybe there was an option for a man scan somewhere else. If there was, I would say they should have done that instead of going for console scan. But, lo and behold, this is where we are. Um, because I think, again, at this, at this stage in the game, hitting ring console doesn't do anything for you. Right? If you're not in zone for a long sh by a long shot, which they aren't, 
then it doesn't do anything for you. I'm looking at zones, again, this is something I mentioned, I've been mentioning, I'm looking at zones 1 to 3, if I'm looking at my team, and I'm looking at what, where things went wrong in a certain game, I'm looking at zones 1 to 3, did we fuck up somewhere early game, did somebody maybe not loot some shit, do we have options, did weapon choice fuck it up, did, um, did it, what, did it not go for the game plan, meaning like, you know, if it's like a north climatizer zone, right, you don't want to run close range weapons, you need to have long range weapons for that, especially if you, if you have two MK players. Then you need to start talking about how was the macro? Did we make a bad call here? Do we play for the right stuff here? Should we have gone for this beacon? Did we not go for enough beacons? Did we go for too many? You know, all that sort of, sort of stuff when I'm watching my team. When I'm watching other teams, I'm looking for the same things, zones 1 to 3. I'm really, really, really looking at what they do zones 1 to 3. Because as similar to like last game right here, there's, like, like I said, like when I got to like this point, Sorry, I'm going to go back just for a second. When I got to, like, this point, the game was already chalked. There's no coming out of this. Nothing of... Nothing that they do would have made them survive any of this. They are, they are the team to die. So... Um, th that's why I generally look for game zones 1 to 3. What are they doing? What are the decisions they're making? How are they looting things? All that good stuff. How are they playing for Evo? So on and so forth. Because that is where most teams make mistakes. Zones 1 to 3. Um, alright. I wanna hear- oh, let's hear what Hawkins has to say though. Sorry for all the people that are here for the only the Apex side. This is what happens when I drink on stream. Granted, I've kind of rambled on many streams even without the alcohol, but... They're coming towards the thing, I got the cash. It's a gold R3. Uh, I'll take it. Can we take the ra- can we take this building? Can you go somewhere? Yes. Step in them. I'm making an attack, okay? Move up, move up, move up. Yeah, yeah. They're running. I was gonna say, I don't really like where effects positioning is for this. Alright, let's play for scans. They're running back, they're running back. Let's play for the okay. So, I like this play a little bit more than uh, the way they played last game. So, I don't know if maybe this is a product of last game and not having the man scan. But this game, having a man scan and playing for it is a lot better. Um, I think. Again, I couldn't see the map last game, so I don't know exactly where they were in relation and what they could have done. But basically, playing for them, they're playing for man scanning here, which is why they tried to, I guess, like kind of rat somebody, pseudo rat somebody on the tracks. But I like this play a little bit more. Definitely. Uh, Again, I wish I could see the map. Oh shit! I held on. Sorry, boot problems or wooting problems because it's the same thing. Let's wrap all the way around fucking thermal, come for the short mirage here. Okay, let's wrap all the way around thermal. It's a crypto team, by the way. Are they running crypto? No, that's a crypto team. They have crypto lifeline. Okay. Okay. We have to know this. Good try. I'm putting David. I guess I'll have to look into that. Yeah, one guy's below. That's all I'll say. Alright, go. Yeah, one guy's below. We have to know this. Good try. I'm putting David. Yeah, he's on height. Yeah, one guy's below. Alright, yeah, 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 yeah. go. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot him. I'm gonna shoot him. I have to drop. I have to drop. Yes, I have to drop. I'm dropping on height. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Oh, I'm behind him. I'm behind him. This is fucking. That is giga chat as fuck. Holy shit. Me personally, bro, I'm. If I'm. If this is me, I'm shitting bricks like, uh oh. Because I'm assuming he was maybe landing for this, but I guess maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was just straight up going for this. This is some, I mean, this is some controller shit, bro. All I'm saying is, MK players are not landing behind a team this fucking close. <laughs> you're just simply not seeing that kind of gameplay out of them. Um, you're seeing MK players are landing up here and they're shooting down into the smoke and just taking height and playing it slow. But I guess they did get a knock. Um, this is giga chat as fuck. I love uh, this is sick play. I love this play. Where's reps at? Always gotta be watching your back. If we can kill the team, what the guys the going right now. Okay. Again, what guy Can you smoke for me, Spike? I can pop over there. Where, where, where? Let's yeah, just kill him. Let's kill him. Let's kill this whole team. I can bang ult. I can bang ult. Yeah, bang ult and fucking let me go and kill these guys. I bang ult them, okay? Okay, guys. Smoke, we, smoke left side. Smoke left side. Smoke yeah, I have a big armor advantage on most of these teams right now. Purple, two perps, one red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. 
Do I want my destiny to shot John instead of be the bread? You really are a fanboy, aren't you? No, 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 smokes. Okay. I'm chilling inside, I'm chilling inside. Yes. We got, we're gonna get me here, yeah. bro. Yes, we're good, we we're good. We have zone. Just One hold. team is gonna come behind us. They just fucking hold. We have zone. Yes. We just play the left side here later. Yeah, they're there right now. Listen. Our spots. We're Hinge. talking right. Yep. Listen. What's up, Kapreem? How you doing, man? Gatekeep the southeast. How's the league grind been? Gatekeep the north team and we fucking play the spots, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Just kill this fucking comes from Hawkus? Yeah. Yeah, they have a they have a nice little area in front of them. Not great to play, but it's a it's a starting point. But they can't play it early because then they might get wrapped. So I, I kind of I do. I, it's not the greatest position for them to be in. I'm I'm curious how someone I think there's someone behind them. I'm curious how they got there. To be honest. Okay, effect with the, without the comms. I'm personally a huge sucker. F look. I'm personally a huge sucker for calming literally everything you do, all the damage you do, all of the all of the information you get from that shot, right? Um, obviously that like they're mostly focused on this area, which they should be. But if things if things um, get really really rough, it's not bad to know to tell your team like, hey, look, this team in front of us has blues, right? This team to the north here, northwest has blues. We can do something if we need to. Not a bad calm to have. Um, I'm I tell my team this all the time. I'm sure you've heard it from me if you watch any of their streams or my stream. But I think when a very like s basic set of things anyone can do, which will make you and your team perform way better, is uh, four things to communicate when you kill or when you shoot somebody. Sorry. Uh, obviously, damage, armor, character, and the most important one. Most people only do the first three. The most important one, I think, one of the most important ones is um, what like I generally will say behavior is like the, is how I classify it as but what I mean by that is like you know what are they doing are they just hiding behind some cover are they moving right to left across your screen left to right are they rotating um are they just trying to heal are they fighting another team all that sort of stuff right if you come those four things on the fucking regular you would be surprised how much more success you'll have over the course of whatever it is you're doing whether it's ranked uh scrims etc because um, Hawkus, for example, is the IGL. He's the main. He's the main caller here. He might not know that information, right? It's pretty safe to assume if you have two purples and a red, and it's uh, a decent amount of squads still left zone four. Most people probably there's probably still a lot of people that have blues in, in this current meta. It's a safe thing to assume, but when you can stat check somebody so reliably, when you have purples and reds, you can stat check so fucking easily any team that has even just one blue armor, right? Because that means the other two have purple. Very rarely that the they'll have one red. That's like a lifeline thing right there if they do. Um, so you can stat check pretty fucking hard. If things go bad, if all of a sudden you have to vacate the area that you're in, you can run northwest. You know, those comms like that can be like, just eight, like, you know, if shit goes south here, you can say shit like, um, Hawkins can make an easy, easily make a call like, oh, uh, ape northwest, they have blues, they're bambies, you know, stuff like that. You know, very simple things. Um, something I tell my team all the time, they always forget the fourth thing though, behavior. Always, always try to calm behavior. It's very important. Because, you know, if someone's rotating, um, somebody's, like, fucked in an area, they can't move, like, you know, small stuff like that really matters. Yeah, exactly, Gerardo. There you go. That's a good student right there. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how many teams in Tier 1 don't... You'd be surprised how many teams in Tier 1 in, like, Tier 1 teams don't do that. And then, like... People will be like, and then they'll die to something where one player had information where the other player didn't. I talked a lot about the beginning of the stream when we were figuring out who to watch, TSM being one of them. I was talking about how TSM, um, I personally don't think they're very good at 3v3s. I never really have. And it, I'm not surprised when I talked to Hal in person and he talked about how, um, he talked about how they just didn't win any 3v3s. It didn't surprise me. Like, I think, I think all of the players individually on TSM are some of the best in the world. They're fucking amazing at what they do. But that's the thing, is every time I've watched them, every time I watch them fight, I've always thought that 3v3 was a bit lackluster because it didn't feel like three people playing together. It felt like three individual players very good at what they do on the same team. There's a huge distinction between the two. So, one of just being able to calm those four things and having your teammates play off of that is a big factor when it comes to playing as a team instead of three people who are good at what they do.
So, again, might be a hot take, I don't know, but I've never thought TSM's 3v3s are very strong. I think it was actually their weak point, despite how good their players are. What? What even just happened here? Okay. Okay. I was saying that I kind of like their spot more so because I like what they were doing, but I think they ran into their spot a little too early. Um. I think if they played that from the tunnel the entire way and walked their way in, I think that was way, way, way stronger. Because there's a lot of times, so when you're in this situation, when you're a team that's in this kind of situation, okay? Akis wants to take all the way left. There's no real reason to, right? There's no real reason to go further left. Um, as long as, uh, uh, something I, uh, hey, for all the old ass students uh, out there that watched my uh, VOD reviews from years ago too, uh, this is kind of the, the, the hermit crab principle gone wrong, if you will. Um, they're, I, I honestly think this spot that they're in right now is really good. There's no reason for them. They'll pretty much have, control most of this. There is a chance that someone rotates from th through here, but they pretty much control most of this. And they want to keep it that way. Like, you don't have to move into the spot that's in front of you just because it's there. Sometimes it's way stronger to just play, and what I mean is obviously, so they move in, into this spot, right? Sometimes it's just way stronger to play your space around you and just make sure nobody can exist there. The same thing that SSG just did to them, right? I don't know where SSG came from exactly. I'm assuming SSG might have been the team that was on height. And then they saw, they saw Alliance move this way. So then they thought, let's be the bread and make sure that they're the teams that get pinched in an awkward spot, right? So, I'm not really sure why Alliance moved up. I think this just holding this spot and then walking in with zone is just fine. Um, just making sure nobody rotates on, over here on you. I, I actually kind of want to see. I think this game actually loaded on AOGS uh, status or whatever. I want to see if, they're, if what I'm talking about is exactly what happened. Because that's just how I'm seeing it from their POV. Um, Alliance died. Right here. Be the bread. It's the lesson that keeps biting us all in the ass. No matter how far along we are. Okay. Let's take a look at this. I want to go back to all the way from... Okay, Fnatic might have done... Fnatic did the long wrap around. Okay. Again. Okay, so SSG did do the thing I was talking about, right? So SSG... I thought they were the team on hype, but they're not actually. SSG is the team in uh, one of the trailers here, I think. And they just decide, okay, let's just go fucking this way and just... They, Alliance gave them an opening, right? If Alliance was all hanging out here, right? Or like right here, SSG can never make this play. And then SSG is all of a sudden in a really awkward spot where they have to send probably this way. Sorry, I can't draw arrows. I've never been good at drawing arrows. <laughs> Anyways, you get the point though, right? If, if, you're, if you're a team that's holding a really strong spot like Alliance here and you don't give them free damage, um, eventually they have to move. I didn't realize Fnatic actually came from behind, which is also one reason why you want to play back here, right? You want to play back here, if your back is never... If your back is never secure, which in this case, it's not, right? Uh, I think the zone, the zone pretty much looked like this the whole time, right? Even this right here, this is doable. Zone 3, even maybe in zone 4, like, this might be, this is doable. And this is something you never want to turn your back on. As long as something like this is possible, you always play here. You always make sure they cannot do that to you. Always. This should not be allowed. This is three free KP for you. Um, so as long as this wrap is available, somebody should always be watching that. That is just not... Should not be allowed to happen. Especially with Acoustic. You put barrels in, so like as soon as they come in, they already have ga zone damage taken. They come in, they just fucking... They just die. Like they should just... This should not be happening. Um, so... Kind of a bit of a misplay for Alliance. Um, I like the spot a lot, but then they ended up moving in here, and they allowed not only SSG to move in, they also allowed Fnatic to move in. So, a bit of a macro misplay, I think. Um, pretty bad. Actually, like, really bad. Um, this is something I think a lot of NA teams are a lot more cognizant of than EU. 
this like this type of play reminds me of old apex where it just all that mattered was just getting in as far in as you could and then after that it's just you just pray that all the teams on the edge die we're not in that kind of meta anymore man you have to take command of the space around you something i've always told my team something i've always taught my team you know so yeah so far i think i believe this is game five so far it just seems like alliance is kind of stuck in old days this is kind of where like i mentioned it earlier but it, it feels like they're stuck in the old way of playing where and, and this is something i think that emea has struggled with a lot and not as much this tournament which is which what's really nice to see but emea among the apac regions in the past have always been guilty of respecting teams around them too much and thinking that they're just not going to ape their shit you know the times have changed man and this tourney shows it this tourney showed that the other regions are coming across to it the teams that are really strong are going to make you pay if you give them too much space and of course a little combination of ssg and Fnatic uh, showed that in the last game I do think that would be yeah. I think a little bit of that and a little bit of like there's a huge difference in in the way games are played when you come out to a really hot start and when you don't. And I think the you know, they had a couple bad starts, game two especially. Um that can fluster you a little bit. That can fluster you like really good in a bad way. <laughs> Sorry, English second language. But you know what I mean. Like um the way your series starts can certainly have an impact on the way you call. Trust me, speaking from both experience on my team and just watching teams, right? At the end of the day, we're human. And despite how much we practice this and how much we know, how well we know this game, when you're emotionally like, holy fuck, nothing I'm... Like, put yourself in the shoes of an IGL where you're calling everything and nothing is working, right? You don't know what the hell to call after that. You know, all of a sudden, your calls will look shaky because you're just like, nothing is fucking working and I don't know what to do anymore. Um, and that is certainly something that happens to a lot of the teams that struggle. Um, sure, I've seen TSM, I've seen Hal go through it. How many times have you seen Hal blow up and just go, I don't fucking know, man. I don't know what to do. And it's because he's trying to call so many different things and nothing is working. Sure. We can get purple here, to be honest. Uh-huh. Speaking of teams to copy, we just comp- It's hard to say because we're gonna be entering new metas. Um, we're on a different patch now. We're not on this patch anymore, so it's hard to say. Yeah, we can maybe kill him. Maybe. Losing is neurologically fatiguing? Yeah, 100% man. Like, I hate to say it, but like... A lot of my team's faults are out of game, they're not in-game, you know? I'm the first to admit I'm wrong if our like gameplay is bad, or like our, our pl game plan is bad. I'm the first to admit it's bad. But, um... It's hard to make that call as a coach when you know the players are just like not playing to their fullest. And sometimes, on the player's behalf, it's not easy to play to your fullest when you're just getting shit on. You know what I mean? That's just... It's so different when you come out to a win in a series than... In, especially in these land series. When you come out to a win, it feels like a huge weight off your shoulders, right? Meanwhile, when you... Until you have one good game on land in a series, you feel like... Everyone feels on edge until that one good game. At least in my experience, so... Yeah, this should be late a little bit though. Yeah, on the they, they might take the balloon. Anyone got a heavy mag, by the way? I need a I got gold one. Yeah, give me gold. Dude, Balfreen is the same thing, man. <laughs> it's the same shit, different day. Um, ultimately, it's not my job to fix a lot of IRL things, you know what I mean? Brother, what? 328 is fucking... That shit's almost game 7, what the hell are you talking about? Super <laughs> to go. Ball's a call, but I like it. A lot to learn about Noctilus. Yes, I have been spamming comms about Noctilus. It seems very... I don't like the way they're starting this fight, by any means. However, they are in the strong spot right here, right? Um, any team that's already in this spot generally will struggle from anyone coming this way so because because no one is going to shoot them right they've already cleared all this there's nobody over here um so generally the team that's in the spot despite how this push is kind of messy it's kind of all over the place they don't really coordinate a thing um they are able to push this team out they are easily able to push this team out if they do it right we're 
my god, legends! Not my boy Koifel! Koifel about to 1v3. Ah, shit, never mind, Koifel's washed. Unlucky. Yeah, that was actually like, that was not a great fight from Alliance. Like, they didn't, they could have coordinated the walk up on them a lot better, but. Um, but like I said, they're, they are in the power spot where they can be the aggressors without a lot of fault. Oh, yeah, I forgot you're a legend simp, Balvary, aren't you? I'll pop you too, I'll pop you too. I'm gonna be on 90%, so we just wait for it, okay? Okay, yeah. What do I think of the World Cup Tournament? I'm not That's a very broad question. Well played, boys. Good Can you narrow that down a little bit? No, I mean, I was telling people, look, a lot of people think, like, we might have bad blood. I don't have any bad blood with any of the people I formerly coached. I talk every night, almost borderline, I talk every night with Guild. We play a league together. I did have some bad blood with Sykes for a bit. We, we squashed that. It's all good. Um... Although he actually did, like, make me genuinely upset. But I, I don't have any bad blood with Koi either. Things didn't work out, and that's just the reality of it. Um, I don't think it was... The only thing that pisses me off about the whole Koifel situation is how many people look... How many people, like, actually look at our team and go, Koi was the only good player on that team? When it's like, come on, man. Like, we've had so many good results with everyone else. Not saying it's Koi's fault, necessarily. We all fucked up. We all could have been better. Every single person included, myself included. People say that? Yes. Look at any of Koi's tweets, man. Look at any of his tweets. People underneath are just like, you're the only good player on that roster anyway. It's like, don't get me wrong, Koi's is fucking insane. I genuinely think he, mechanically, at least on controller, he is one of, if not the best. Like, the kid's fucking talented. He oozes talent. There's still a lot of work he has to be, he needs to go through to be a full competitive player, though. There's a lot of work that kid needs. And I've been trying to help him as much as I can. Like, even though he's not on my team anymore, like, I care for him, and I want him to have a good career. Because he certainly can. He could be the fucking... He could run this fucking scene, you know? As long as he gets, gets, gets it all together. But yeah, it's just like, we've had insane results with Guild. We've had insane results with Sykes. We didn't have insane results with Koi. How are you really gonna... Like, I just hate the disrespect that is thrown towards knock and fun. I really do. Those guys work so fucking hard. And they're M and K. Like, they actually work so fucking hard, and I hate the amount of disrespect they get, so, they get shown. They're not the best players in the world, necessarily, I wouldn't say, but, like, they're really fucking good at what they do. And I believe that they can win tournaments. It's just... You know? We all have things we need to work on. We all have things we need to be better on. It just makes me sad to see all of their work Boiled down to Lol Koi was the best. At the end of the day, they're both MK. And then people just immediately point to that and think that's the problem with everything. Who's just respecting them? Dude, a lot of people, man. A lot of people. Even in the pro scene. Um, so far, okay, I do want to talk about this zone a little bit. Uh, this spot I'm a huge fan of. I don't know if Alliance- I mean, Alliance does watch us a lot. And I don't know if Alliance normally runs this, but I, I actually generally like this, uh, spot on this zone, personally. My general rule of thumb for zones, I, I like the- so Alliance is playing right here, right? Generally, I think very good. Um... Something- this is something I've taught- I've had to fucking bash into Nox's head, I swear to god. Uh, everyone else on my team understands it, but Nox always calls against it. But he's finally learned, I think. Generally speaking, if you are playing, uh, if you're trying to play for zone, or playing for the smart play on storm point, height is, the, the general rule of thumb is height is king. Okay. Now this zone ends up pulling all the way over here, but let's say it was like a, a zone that's, I don't know, somewhere that pulls out like, I don't know, pulls out here or something, right? Generally, any zone in this area, Height is fucking king. Even if, like, for example, like, you know, this building, even though it's completely on the far end, let me make sure you guys can see it uh, real quick, because I know my camera might be blocking it. Um, okay, height is fucking king. So my team likes to play here a lot. I'm personally not, like, a massive fan of this air spot, but it's doable. It's, it's good enough, um, just because your back is, for the most part, cleared. Um, and then you have, like, oversight of everything going on around you, okay? 
I think the best spot in any of these types of zones, even though the zone goes north pad, I think the best spot is up here on this building. And playing height down on storm, on storm point, you will almost always do very well. Something I, like I said, something I've had to even still to this day bash into Nox head. Always play height down. Even if it's not like, even if you know, if you're a team that knows that the zone isn't going to end here, this just gives you options. You have oversight, if you're playing, for example, this spot right here, you have oversight of absolutely everything. Sorry, there's a lot of drawings. You have oversight of absolutely everything. You're giving yourself room to move and room to do whatever the hell you want. And most importantly, to bully all the teams around you. Okay. This team, this spot kind of does the same thing. It's pretty similar. Um, it's height that looks over a lot of shit. So you can make sure that no teams can play anywhere. This, this team can't play outside. These teams can't play anywhere out here. You're doing all of that. So when you have to inevitably make the rotate, you're basically clearing your way in. Um, or if you don't, if the zone ends up being out here somewhere, there's a lot of area in front of you that people just can't play. So generally speaking, on Storm Point, the way the map is designed, height is just always king. Even if the zone is not ending there. Like That's the big takeaway. So I do like this spot. Yeah, we're definitely going to get zone up pretty much, I think. Yeah, it's fine. We Any news on third member? None that I can we're unveil. Oh, they're on the building, on the building, on the building. We can kill them. Yeah, one second. Okay, I'm going to cross on the right side here. You guys get close. One sec. Wait for Unironically, Rui, if you actually did that and they listened, you'd actually do a, you'd probably do a lot better than you would imagine. Yeah, we should wait for it. We should wait for it. I'm going to poke. Yeah, I'm moving right side. I'm taking the building here. I'm poking the Two guys close to you. Two guys close to you. Yeah, Belvery. We do. We we play that spot a lot. It's not my personal favorite, but it definitely works. If they even get there, they might not even get there. I wouldn't say most gaming. Okay, no, nobody, nobody oh, they can. I'm telling you, I've seen, trust me, right. I have seen a lot of these zones as a Cascade team. And I promise you, <laughs> yeah, some teams might call, right? I'm not, I'm not the greatest personally at zone calling. I'm not. Um, but that doesn't mean that it can't be. There's a lot of really devious pools when it comes to this area of the map. Uh, uh, trust me, I've seen I've seen it a lot. Even people of both knock and fun are infinitely better at calling zones than I am. And even they get fucking surprised all the time. Why is no one playing command center? Because the game the game doesn't end there. Oh, the wall itself. Same reason. There's no good rotates out of it, and there's no the zone doesn't end there. If the zone doesn't end there, and there's absolutely no good rotates out, there's no reason to play there. Yeah, sure. Afterwards, yeah. zone as well. Just come to me. Just come to me. We don't care about wall. All right. Anyone you hear that? We just wait. shit. All right, come in. I don't know how this game ends for Alliance, but that's... I love the way Hawkus is thinking. Watch me catch somebody's ass. Uh, you good. I, I don't know what the game this is. I haven't watched from Alliance's POV. This is all new to me. I, I generally save myself for these streams. Yeah, let's see what's on there. Let's see what's on there. Yep. Not the game where they drop on LG. Wait, I don't know, Slayer. Slayer, Slayer are you still there? Uh, <laughs> Is it the game where they drop on you guys? I don't think what they're doing here is necessarily bad. Like I said, it's really hard to tell where the next zone is going unless you're like a freak at zone calling. Um, if you don't know where the zone is, that is part of the game. If you don't know where the zone is going to go, then playing your spot and just waiting for the next zone is fine. As long as you're playing a spot where you can rotate from, which again, they are doing. This is like the one game they're actually doing that in. I didn't feel like they're doing it in most of them. I think so, Gerardo, yeah. Once this zone already, sh once this zone shows, at this level, if you're asking about Apex, like, ALGS level, at this level, yes. Most teams will know where the zone's ending at this level as soon as they see zone 3. So, um, I don't think, the only thing you would want, the only objective you'd want to rotate for is maybe a man scan. Man scan to show you what is open, if you can, if it's available for you. But it, most times, it won't always be. Okay. So it seems like they're opting for the wall rotate. Not a big fan, personally. And here's why. Um, I, yeah, I don't like that they went here. I think this is really bad. Um, I think if you have this entire area, it's good. 
it, you're playing from the height down. The only team to fuck with you is this team. The only team... And their rotate in is going to be harder than yours, right? They have to go across through a lot of really fucking open areas, whereas you can play a lot of... There's like two rocks in a tree you can play here, um, which have actually like pretty good head glitches from what I remember. But this is how my team generally plays this, and we do very well. We play from here, we make sure nobody can play out here or exist out here, and then we go in late if we need to, if the zone happens to flip the other way. Sometimes we'll just evac. That's like last ditch effort, but... I don't like the way they play this. My team, like I said, we play this area so much, I've never seen my team play up here, and I think there's a reason for it. <laughs> I, which is me telling them I don't fucking like it. That is the reason. Plot twist. I have never liked this wall oh, rotate. Fuck, yeah, pull away. Fuck, we need to evac the ship. Right. Okay, yeah, we're we can put two. Listen, yeah, we're double And they're smart players, too. I think they realize this yeah. pretty yeah. bad, too. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're playing. We're okay. gonna look to take a building, it might be free. If it's not free, we're gonna land rocks. We can also play the outside rocks here, and we can look for three piece in general. We can also go to. We can I wish I could see the map, man. The thing is, we need to see the not team. The not team is either gonna go on the outside here, we can maybe go early and gate keep them, or we just land the gate keep uh, the army, okay? We, yeah, we like play the back room. So this is, okay, so they're they're under the, the guise of thinking that they can evac from here. Which I won't harp on them for, because like I said, I didn't even know you can. My team never plays around this area. Yeah, we fly in there. But yeah, we have our plans, okay? So we fight the army. We oh, would that be probably around the same time, Quips? Maybe earlier. We can also land on this building. Like, there's so much space we have. Yeah. Um, who wants the ultics? Yeah, pricey. I had you, Alliance, and uh. Okay, if I take it then. You, Alliance, and Moist were my favorite three, man. That I wanted to do well. I think your guys' fucking story is sick, bro. Seriously. And you guys, like, dominated, like, the first three days. Can't put it? I cannot put it. We cannot put it. Uh oh. Yeah, it is. Bro, All fuck. Right. All right. Wait, what? Okay. All right, so I can't harp on them too much. The reason they made, instead of doing the rotate that I was just talking about, they made this rotate because they thought they could evac tower from here, which makes sense with that kind of context. I can see why they would want to do that. I still don't really fully like it because evac towering is, to me, is a last resort. It's something if you don't have any other options in mind, you just fucking evac tower and pray to God. But I think with their armors... And their loot doesn't seem horrible. I mean, Hawkins is pretty fucking good. I think this game plan that I was talking about here, them coming down here and just like playing this fucking choke and just playing the outside, I think this is the best thing to do, personally. They have a lot of a capability to control this area. Why not take advantage of that? I understand they, they yeah, thought we, we that they could do this, but like, yeah. even then, even, even if this could work, it's still blind. And I don't like it. I never have. I don't like blind rotates. You hate blind rotates, you're fucking right. You know me better than I do, man. Oh my god. I didn't... That is a devious angle. I didn't know you could be up there. Oh my god, sweet got shit on. Get out of there, McKid, sweet. I'm not gonna lie. I, I mean, that's like that is through through why I do not like that rotate. Obviously, alliance were under the uh, alliance were under the impression that they could evac tower from there, which does make that rotate idea better. It's still, I think, it's still the lesser rotate. Like I said, in one way, this way you're gambling. Even if that evac tower works, you're gambling. This way, you're you have so much more control of your game. And I'm always going to be in favor of something like that. Um, and like I said, this is how my team plays a lot of these zones. If, if my team... I, again, fun is a fucking zone-calling demon. A lot of times he'll just be like, it's, uh, it's a north pad zone. And then we'll end up in one of these buildings or areas anyway. But regardless, um, even if you guess wrong and you end up up here, it's still really good to play from there. Like, it's not bad. You have, you have a lot of control being at the, the team on the end of the... On the edge. Oh. Nice fucking try. Why is it oh. dog? This game is dog shit. Good fucking energy that game. Uh, we might have zone. Might Anyways. No. Don't remember the zone either. We'll see. This is the game that E8 goes fucking crazy in, though. Dude, honestly, I kind of wish I kind of wish they had a better capability show showcase what they have in finals. The whole D7, E8 0, 07 shit. Is, I kind of feel bad for him. They're kind of in, like they're they're doing their own thing, which is good. Hey, good for them. 
I do love me some sea lion though. That man's a goat. Love that guy. It's a little devious from uh, lions. I like this. Playing for an edge fight. I respect it. Understanding you probably need more points. You need a big game. No, I love sea lion too. I wish we got, had a chance to work more with him, but uh, Exa didn't want to pay him. Sadly. Because he was, he was with us for a little bit. But I'm glad that I got like a chance to meet him and just like, you know, just talk and hang out with him. Make friends with him. Alright, animal storm catcher? Yeah, there was a lot of things. Really small thing, but I'm always a fan of coordinated comms. This is one thing I always, uh, obviously LG might not have had the performance most people were expecting. They did have a bounce back this, this past, uh, LAN. But one thing I've always respected Sweet for, and one thing that he's just watching him has taught me a lot is... Like, how little coordinated comms people do in this game. What I mean is just simple, simple things of like, let's all do this on three. Like, three, two, one, right? I've seen so many old tournaments of Sweet just like calming like, hey, uh, we have, like, it's like an end zone, right? And they're in their own little safe area, but they're like, we just have to send these guys. We have to kill them no matter what. And rather than waiting for the last possible minute, they all swing at the same time on three, a very coordinated effort, and they just kill the team for free because they caught them off guard, right? Small little coordinated, like, shit like this. You'd be surprised. It's not happened very often in teams. And I, and I always love seeing it. Even if it's just something as simple as this, like... <laughs> it's something that you obviously do, like, in attack FPSs, like Valorant and stuff like that. Right? You have more executed plans. But Apex is just such a broad game that most people don't even bother doing stuff like that. But it is, I think it's really strong. Sweet micro is good, but his zapping and passive aggressive is too much for me. I don't blame you. There is no... I will say, there is no IGL that's perfect. You basically have to like... It's kind of like pick your poison with IGLs, right? If you look at all the great IGLs in the game. I, I Even though Sweet hasn't had the best results, I still think of him as one of the best. Hands down, I think... I think his capability to do what he does is... He is like... there. I mean, within English-speaking IGLs, I don't think there's anyone that comes close to what he can do. Um... Which I think is a bit of a double-edged sword. If you watch my LG VOD review way back when Pro League just started, um, it can be a double-edged sword. It depends on if you have the right players with you. And I'm not saying, like, LG doesn't have the right players with them. I'm just saying in general. Um, like, me personally, I don't do well with somebody who micros my every movement. Personally. Some people do. Sweet, obviously, is one of those IGLs that does do that. And there's nothing wrong with it as long as the team is okay with it. Like I said, I, I admire the shit. The way he is able to do that is so impressive to me. But it's also something that I can't... Like, if I were on it, to be on a team with him, I couldn't do it. I couldn't deal with it. Um, but I'm also somebody who is able to... Like, I have, like, my own... I know my own personal capabilities and how to use abilities very well. I have a big MOBA background. So that would, like, bother me because I feel like I understand abilities probably a lot more than most. Um, let's look at this. Things should not be going wrong here. That is really weird pathing from Hawkus, I can't lie. Alright. I don't. That's wow. That was really bizarre. Um, couple things I want to talk about here. This pathing right here is really strange to me. So first off, look at this. I don't know if maybe Hawkus was in his map and he didn't see. But first off, because you see, like you see, his camera is like centered and not moving at all. That means he's generally on his map. Um, because obviously your camera's not moving then. So you see, obviously, right here that he's getting, uh, I think it's, it's effect is pinging that they're right here. Okay, yeah, I think Hawkins was just in his map. Because look at this, ready? Right here, it never moves. So yeah, he never actually notices that they're there. That's kind of sad. Excuse me. Because, um... 
I mean, he kind of was in his map a while because team here, team here kind of tells me, like, get the hell out of the map. But anyways, he's dropping ranges. Yeah, I guess that there's that too. Yeah. Okay, so this was weird to me. So he scans. He sees all of them here. He doesn't see anybody here at all. And that's the big thing. Because I don't understand this pathing, right? He's almost cracked. I don't understand why he doesn't just go here further. I don't, like, he does, instead of just going here, he does this little going out this way. Maybe because he thinks that they're too close? I, I don't know, but I, I don't, I don't understand this at all, because he ends up taking so much more extra damage, and he ends up not being able to really fight. Look at this. I don't really get it. I don't know if, I don't know, it might be like a, an effect of, uh, Maybe being like out of nowhere, all of a sudden seeing that a shit ton of people in his face where he didn't expect them to be. I also don't know why they don't just go back. Um, right about here. He's scanning. I don't know why he doesn't just double back. This seems really weird. I think a lot of it is Hawkins is just caught off guard. But I don't know why they don't just... I don't know, this just seems weird. No, I kind of agree with that, Zikido, yeah. Like, it's just like... But... The thing about getting deleted so fast is like... When you- when you drop like this, like when you- when you take a cannon like this in comp, right? And all of a sudden one of your teammates says, there's a team here. Instantly, your mind needs to be okay. Well, there's a huge chance we probably just take this cannon back, right? They're like dying by the cannon when you have the capability to take it, especially when you know people are there before you even hit the ground, is weird. I would imagine they'd take it back. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I would never expect there to be a team here. 16 squads left, zone two. I wouldn't expect there to be a team here either, so it would catch me off guard too. But I think, like, the default needs to be, like, hey, like, we're gonna, you know, shit hits the fan. I feel like it's always understood that when shit hits the fan and when you're taking a cannon, there's always that small percentage of you going, okay, well, we're gonna take the cannon back, right? So it's a little weird to me that that wasn't the default, that they wanted to fight it. Um, they probably have an armor advantage, but it doesn't really matter if they get, like, a huge start on you, right? Um, I don't know. A little strange to me. Either way, Thing, we'll just move on to the next game. Ring, yeah, ring. Not too much, we don't have to overanalyze the hell out of that. We can just go next. Um, we have literally two more games to go. Um, I'll be right back though. I, I do need to go to the bathroom. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'm hitting some of my gas. Uh, it's just like so we can't see inventory and stuff off these VODs and like map and like what they're looking at. This is a nice EVO line though. They hit the EVO at the tracks and then they get, go straight up for this and they're grabbing uh, this. A lot of EVO in a very small area so this should be very- should be a decent game for them. I actually want to look at this real quick. I wish I could see the map for this because it matters so much but I want to see what Hakka says here. Take the cash? Yep. Yes. Nine, ten, my meter is careful. Nice yeah, guys, just one team. Which is probably it's probably LG. And free right now. We should continue there. Sorry, liquid. Would be dark zero too. I think we just go for the choke and gate you pretty much. We should mm -hmm. continue there. Uh, we have right. We have two evacs. Give me one. Okay. So the plan is to go to the choke. I'm surprised they get caught off guard there, and get picked. They should see it coming. But again, I can't see the map on that. But uh, let's just get the fucking hill. We gate. Do you get the chance as a coach to have a group of coaches just having a gay chat conversation? Okay. You know, me and Raven actually did a like a podcast style like stream a lot uh, like a couple years ago with J Beebs. It was me, him, and J Beebs talking about a lot of comp and just like some some changes. I actually thought it was really good. Yeah, sure. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Shots was fragmented. Because it was very um, it was something about like crypto and Watson. I don't remember exactly, but I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's more to it, but like that, I remember that was like one of the things we talked about a lot. But it was like, it was a couple years ago at this point. This is before he was on TSM. I'm pretty sure. It was fun though, I wouldn't mind doing stuff like that. Honestly, I love talking about the game with j Because he's... It's... It always feels like he's listening, and he's also has a very good understanding of the game as well, so it's, it's always really fun to watch. Or, fun to talk to him about the game. But then I feel bad, because anytime we talk to him, I don't want it to just be about work. 
Okay, I want to see this. Yeah, I'm surprised they get caught off guard here. Unless it's team maybe geyser or something or like evac. That's also a really late smoke from effect. I can't see effects PV obviously, but like look how I'm just trying to figure out I feel like this should have been avoided. This should not have happened. Cause like listen to this. Yeah, I'm a scan here. Smoke me, smoke me, smoke me. At 59, smoke me. A smoke didn't come out for like four seconds, which is a crazy amount of time. Also, shout out. I mean, they didn't do that well, but shout out uh, T Law for using scouts. I still feel like that gun is. I mean, it's good, but the guns that you use it with are not good. Okay, it shouldn't have been on cooldown. I don't know what the dude's smoking. Literally and figuratively. Dude, lava choke? Eh. It's. I mean, it's. You can't say it was better to do this or that because we can't see the map, right? Like that's one thing that's hurting this a lot right now is I can't see the map. If I can, because they scanned the, they scanned the man skin and they. They looked, it seems like they looked for a place to play, which is good. Obviously, you want to do that. Um, but it doesn't seem like they looked too hard about the teams around them that might fuck their rotate up, which might be one of the inherent problems. But like I said, I can't see the map. So they hit it about here. So this is what they're looking at. Yeah, that's, they should have known. They definitely should have known, right? Uh, it's, it's liquid alienware that walks up on them, obviously right down here. By the time they make it all the way over here, they should have known that a team was going to be somewhere within, um, be somewhere within their, their, uh, gameplay. I, I, knowing this, then I definitely, this was more the play. Um, especially because, like, it, even if you get caught, like, it's a little, it's pretty safe out here. There's a lot of areas to play out here if you absolutely need to, if things go south. But I think playing from here, if they wanted to secure the choke, which is my guess what they wanted to do, like, Realistically, um, Liquid Alienware should have gotten here much faster. Maybe they got hung up on loot. Maybe they're doing their own thing, playing for ring console, maybe. They might have been playing for this ring console down here. Um, either way, like, if I re I'm reading this, like, I would imagine that one of these two teams is going to meet you here before you even get there, because they are kind of there faster. There's also a balloon here if they want to take it. Um, yeah, I'm surprised they didn't go up this way. It's just safer. It's just a safer rotate. Okay, we'll go back to go back to where they get knocked. But I, I feel like, but I feel like I, th I th them going up to this choke, I think is still fine. I think they just need to be a little bit more prepared. Like effect smoke came out really late. Maybe, maybe he didn't have the cooldown. But that's also another inherent problem. You need to be very vocal about your uh, your cooldowns with your team at all times. So if someone asks for a smoke, don't have it for five, five more seconds, something like that, right? Um. Always got to be vocal with your cooldowns and, and when you can use your next ability. So either way, like it was just a misplay. Like they, I don't, I think they could have easily avoided going down there. Um, I don't, I don't know if unlucky maybe saw them on the bridge, but unlucky called for the smoke before he even got shot at. So there is some clear like they knew that they're about to get get fucked. But anyways, they end up getting the reset, which isn't bad, but they do expend some resources obviously for it, which is it's better that they're alive than not. But they do have to expend some ults. So it seems like they wanted to play for one of these houses, maybe, or maybe they wanted to play for this choke. But again, when you read that map, that, that I don't know, uh, maybe I, uh, you have to expect you're not going to get there. Okay, I'm watching behind. Yeah, I'm trying to slide to take space. I will do one eventually, Caleb. Yeah, yeah. just not today. They're shooting it. Maybe either tomorrow or Friday. It looks pretty sparked, the side. Alright. The side? Okay, I'm coming. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Okay. Get just, careful, careful, yeah, just cross safely, cross safely. Wait, they're fighting? They're fighting! I don't know if it's that. Hmm, maybe? The comms are a little ahead of the gameplay in the yeah, VOD. We're, we're kind of running it open here. That makes sense. UV building is free too. Okay, walk up a little bit. Yeah, look. Uh, they're, they're, they're careful, they're careful. Careful, careful. Careful, careful. Careful, careful. Careful, careful. Oh, yeah, they definitely are. Uh, yeah, yeah, they definitely are. I didn't actually notice that. Good comments on that. It's only about a second. So, I mean, it's only about a second or two, but that smoke me call was like, and then it didn't happen for like another four or five seconds is 
There's still delay there, right, on the smoke. It didn't come out where it, it didn't come out as fast as, as it needed to. Because that delay was not as crazy as it did, as it was as the delay between smoke me and then it actually happening. That's kind of unfortunate. Was it like this the whole tournament? I didn't even know that was a thing. Either way, I mean, at the end of the day, they will they live. But, you know, you gotta look to eliminate these very small mistakes. As much as you can. So it separates the men from the boys. Okay, so they got the houses they wanted. I'm pretty sure they wanted this house. I'm pretty sure they know it's not gonna end here, but it's a good start. It's a good starting point, especially with purple armors. Purple armors. Decent loot. Honestly, not bad. This is not a bad circumstance for a dome. For a dome team. I need to get the scan. I want to scan the truck in front of us. I like the small little micro moons here. Not going too crazy without any information. It's a little scary for him to be playing Bloodhound like this, though. You get, you can get picked so fucking easily if you peek the wrong person. You peek a koi floor or something? You're do you're just done. I don't know about this call. This seems like a weird one, but let's see how it works. It's not a bad idea. It could just this can just go wrong horribly. There's also not a lot of room to move because there's only there's still 19 squads left. Their timelines their timeline is not looking good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like that call. Not while they still have an evac tower. Especially. If they didn't have an evac tower, it's a little bit more understandable, but they do. Um... You might not- and I mean, obviously you always run the risk of maybe it getting shot at, or shot out, and people don't let you, uh, go, but like... I think they could have done something a little bit better than this. Um... They don't have any- obviously, they don't have a great amount of playability, right? Um... They're not in zone. There's two buildings that are in zone. This one ba just barely. The other one has a decent bit in it. And their teams are obviously going to occupy that. But I think making a play for one of these is like slightly better. And by that I mean just like something as simple as playing underneath this building. That's it's not ideal. You don't really ever want to stack on top of a team. But when it comes to comp like this, there, and especially when there's a lot of teams alive still left in the zone, generally sometimes it's just better to survive a ring closing than it is to just like force a play. Because that means you'll at least get like one point out of it. Like right, like this is I don't I don't actually remember if they got any points out of this one. I don't think, like do they get any of those kills? You get knocked? They did, they got one. I don't think they get fifteenth though. This but either way. Oh, either way. Um I don't like this I feel like this is a very last ditch effort play. But I feel like they had options. Um I feel like they didn't do enough forward scouting to see if there's potentially like I mean it's 19 squads left you can and you can imagine that there won't be room to play but that's not necessarily always true um oftentimes you'll find if you look at like the map stream it's not always true there's a lot of teams that are outside the circle that are gonna die so I don't know kind of not opting for like I, I feel like a blind evac tower here would have been better than this play only because like you're just everyone's gonna be looking here the zone is very open Everyone's gonna be looking- everyone knows these teams are gonna have to rotate. This is the kill side of the zone, right? Uh, it's an eastern zone. 
every if it's an eastern zone that means everybody on the west is gonna have to do some kind of fighting or some kind of dying to rotate in so i don't really i just don't like this call at all i think it's very short-sighted okay. um i i legitimately think a blind evac tower yeah, would have been better but also i just i don't think they did enough due diligence yeah. to actually look around and and scout things out um which i think hurt them a lot other the other thing i think that hurt them a lot is not trying to i think try, not sneaking a man skin in here I think it actually hurt them a big time. It's kind of hard because you have teams in building, occupying buildings, you have teams uh, occupying the south area. But I think there actually is a world where they can sneak this uh, evac tower or put caustic traps in front of it to at least get it. Um, but it, it would be hard. I think they actually, I, I think they at least try to make it play for it. Because with an evac tower and a man scan in this situation, that's all you need, to be honest. Yeah, teams might shoot it out, but like it's a better play than just going, okay, let's go not in the zone and try to kill everybody around. Obviously, no one's going to rotate through you because there's a team there. They're going to try to rotate around. So you don't really even get that many kills. They got one off of it. Um, I think there's a lot more here that they could play for or try to play for, but they just don't. Um, and I, I know why they, like I said, I know why they don't. They probably feel like it's impossible to hit that beacon, and it might be. But I think I've seen my team do some pretty risky uh, beacon scans, and I think, I think you could have done it I think there's a chance it could have been done. Um, I, I th the slightest, like, they didn't even, like, I don't, maybe he forgot he had an evac tower until he got to this point, because he did say, we'll bait them with an evac tower. Sometimes people forget. Um, but I feel like they should have done at least a little bit more due diligence in scouting. Um, scouting ahead. I think he just maybe heard fighting here. I think he heard this fighting and probably just wanted to try to third party and get some kills on the board and then get this whole side of zone, which, again, is not a horrible play. But the waiting in here play is what kills me, I'm just holding right? Over the truck gun. Can't like, looking for this, trying to see maybe there's a really sloppy fight in these buildings, I think it's fine. But they just sit here for like a minute doing nothing, and then they just go in with zone. If you go in with zone in, in this kind of open zone, you're just gonna die. Um, it's just... To not even see them go for like an evac play kind of hurts, especially when they had one. Especially near a man scan, and not trying to risk... I think risking a, a scan is, is very worth it in this situation. Um, yeah, I don't know. Very, like, uh, I remember from the games I do remember, <laughs> from when I was still relatively sober, um, so far, like, it's just a lot of, like, I think it's just, when you have bad games on LAN, it kind of shakes the nerves a little bit, right? Because then, especially if you've tried multiple different things, and it feels like nothing is working, the calling starts to get very shoddy. Because you're just, and trust me, I know. I've been on both ends of the coin, where the IGL is very in tune, knows what's going on, Games are going well. Feels like the whole feels like they have so much control over the situation. And I've been on the flip side where the games are not going well at all. You need to put points on the board, but nothing you're calling is working, and that feels really bad. So, um, to me, it looks like this is kind of a result of that, right? Because you know, we're even though you're just watching Game Seven, realistically, like twenty plus games happened before this game, right? So there's a lot of there's a lot of like immediate history going into this game. Um, or, an, or immediate bias, I guess, is a way to say it. There's a lot of bias going into this game from the IGL standpoint, which is why maybe they made a call like this. Okay. We go next. We go game eight. Careful when you jump so you don't like hit the crane or some shit. Yeah. Speed up a bit, obviously. Don't like Hawks on the Hound? I haven't seen enough to say whether or not I like or dislike, but... Dude. So far, I haven't been impressed with it, or the effect on the Bangalore. So... But, I can't just be like, oh, this is- I- this is one thing I- this is actually one complaint I have with a lot of coaches. Uh, and I'm- I'm guilty of this sometimes, too. But, sometimes, like, a lot of things you see with teams, with like- like, running- like, teams running weird players on weird characters, a lot of it comes from just, uh, Necessity, right? Like you see a, like you, you, the only team that's been in your shoes, uh, that's experienced the things you experienced is you, right? So a lot of times, a lot of people will be like, a lot of coaches and other players will be like, I don't like these, this person playing this, blah, blah, blah. They'll like comment on stuff, but realistically, they haven't been in the team's shoes. They don't know. Sometimes changes are made out of necessity, right? Like Raven once, uh, cooked us, uh, or like tried to cook us on Twitter for like our really fucked up loot pass on trials 
one thing he was actually like right about but everything else most of our loop pass when we did trials was out of necessity it wasn't because we thought it was the most optimal way to play right it's, that's one of those things that a lot of people i hesitate to be like i don't like this although sometimes i just simply don't sometimes i feel like it's not worth it i'm sure something happened where they felt like this was just a better fit maybe it's not in the long run i just want to shed some i just want to say like you know shed some broader perspective on it Holy shit. Uh, Ox was on the blood hunk, say the info to not hyperfeed compared to scrims. Yeah, so exactly. So like again, is it better than him on bang? God knows. But I hesitate to just be like, yeah, I don't like this either. Just without at least thinking about the situation at least a bit. All that being said I don't really like it either. <laughs> That's just me, though. We don't have cash. We got a double. 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 We got a We got a double. We got in front of us, in front of us. Hmm? Where? Scanning. On rock, on rock. Running, running, running. Six minutes to meet me. Cap. Fuck it in, then. Nice. Two, 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 two. Play together, play together. You have my lock on right side. I'm playing lock on right side. The delayed comms really, uh, kind of suck for a mid-fight. I'm hitting it. Big dead, big dead. Go, 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 go. Go kill. Yep. Swing it. Cossack, one left. Ooh. Dead. On your left, on your left. Okay. I see him. On the right, on the right. Okay, pick it. Pick it. Pick it. Come on, hide. Yes. Heal, heal, heal. Okay. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a bit risky. I didn't really like that push call. Generally, because they were actually ahead on the tempo in the fight, I think you actually go for the res there personally. Um, even even though the cost of gas is there, I think he could have gotten out of it and then gone for the res. Just risky is all. Obviously, they won. Everything works, but okay, it worked. Yes. Take bomber. Take bomber. Why are they delete? No, that's definitely not how it. It's definitely not like that in game. If that's what you mean, corrupts. Guess that's why we don't like Hawks on Hound. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, I don't like IGLs on Hound typically, just because I feel like most of them. Uh, we'll do IGL things and we'll end up inting it at least one game at some point and those always feel really bad like losing those games feels really bad why is it delayed in VODs? Uh, I think it was just like this on broadcast like I think this is just a problem of like from production for the whole tourney Maybe like, like a stream audio delay. Audio is very weird, man. Audio, that shit is black magic as far as I'm concerned. I don't know how audio works. But even on streams, it can vary. Even on, like, setting up a stream, people can have delayed audio. I'm letting go Yeah, I'm just gonna meet you with me today. It's gonna be, uh, it's fucking good. Get three, there's team three. You watch here, I'm watching outside. Let's get the catch here. I'm going for it. Audio's PFM, yeah, right, Impo, yeah. what are all- Dude, pure I was gonna say, what are all of these, like, acronyms you're using, man? <laughs> I don't know these, man. <laughs> but no, I, I generally, like, audio is such a fucking- Like, I'm pretty good with most tech shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna get the right, like, setting up a stream I'm very good at, yeah. and, like, setting up, like, intricate things yeah, with streaming I'm very good at, but when it comes to audio, like, that shit gives me a headache, man. I do not- like, when something just doesn't work, I'm like, I have no reason- or no idea why this does not work. No bias on paper for this yeah. land even happened? Who would you put your money on if you were a betting man? Honestly, I mean... There's no land bias, but there might be a little bit of just bi like of my own inherent bias. Okay, yeah, moist, I probably. I fucking loved. I thought Moist looked really good going to this land. I didn't. I, I honestly didn't think DS, uh, DZ or TSM were going to win this land. I actually didn't think they were going to going into it. DZ actually exceeded my expectations. I think they exceeded everyone's expectations. Like you expect them to do well, but they did like really well, right? Um. I, I saw like. Uh, Moist was probably up there for me. Up. 
I'm gonna put a trap behind us. It's not in this right now. <laughs> What's up, yeah, Zussi? How you doing, man? Yeah, just try to not show yourself. We don't want to Are they coming to us? Yeah, they, I think they will. Okay, let's wrap them. I saw Bangalore. Yeah, we just wrap this, we fucking scan the UV late, and then we go, okay? We fight all side. Zeus, uh, can't obviously talk about it too much, but I think I figured out redacted. Did that thing come close? I was farming last night, every game. Yeah, you scan back right away too. Yeah. But obviously can't say much. Okay. Yeah, of course, man. I got you. I specialize in teaching people how to play games. I have to return the favor for what you did for me in League, baby. Watch out where the non-aim team went. Yeah, Geyser yeah, team might still be like on the UAV. I don't know if that's the Geyser team. They need to fight it though. They need to fight. Take our gun. They just flew to... I see it after the... Oh my god, Hambino! Damn, you were in my chat while streaming? Ripping the content? I'm just kidding. Thank you for the raid. Hope you had a great stream. Look where they're going, though. Appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. It was nice seeing you. It was nice seeing you. At, uh, at LAN. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're doing a little bit of VOD reviewing of LAN. We're finishing up Alliance. This is game eight. Figuring out why they didn't do very well. And then we're going to figure out why TSM disbanded. AKA why they play 17th. Like right in the middle a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw your uh, DMs. Is. I'm gonna pick left side, I'm gonna keep pick right side, okay? Uh, okay. I'm um, yeah. I kind of, okay, look. I kind of like these little plays. When you're down this bad, I mean, it's game eight, right? Like, Alliance needs points. I get, I, normally I don't like these plays, but like, when they're in this situation, I like it. I, I don't know which team they're trying to rat here, um, but they're trying to catch a team rotating in, and I do like that. I think it's, you gotta, when you're down this bad, you have to make plays, but you just have to be always cognizant, if you're in this position, you have to be cognizant of, like, how much time you're losing and how much it's gonna hurt you coming into the game. You're coming into the next zone. Also, Zeus, give me a sec, I'm sending you a video of something I, I witnessed last night in Redacted. It wasn't even, it wasn't my play, but it made me go fucking crazy. Let me show you, you'll, you'll hear it in my voice. Anyways. Detective Hot on the case, always. What's up, Hachi? Edger's gonna be on top, next lane, watch out. Edger's, Edger's was... They were doing pretty well in scrims, if I remember. I didn't look at the final results. I also missed half of scrims, because of IRL things. But from what I saw, they seemed to do pretty, doing pretty well. They might be going back, the other side. There's such a thing as doing everything right from a team POV, but losing simply because the other team did it better. I think there are some cases of that, yeah. Like, and I think, like, it, I mean, this is, it's a very broad question and a very broad topic, but I think a lot of people in the quest to get better at whatever they're doing, um, whether it's competitive gaming, uh, whether it's just playing competitive games, like, you know, League, Dota, FPS games, I think a lot of people... Um, don't lend enough credit sometimes to their opponents, especially at high-end levels. They don't lend enough credit to their opponents. Some t like, it's good to always think how you could have done something better, but there are some situations where somebody just outplayed the living shit out of you, right? There's two outcomes, generally, to when, you, when something fails, right? Either you fucked up or the other person was really fucking good. Sometimes you're doing everything to the best of your ability and the other person is just better or just did it better. And that is, that is certainly a case that can happen. I think too often... I think it's important to be able to distinguish yeah, have, have the difference between uh, both. Kind of here. This should be the only yeah, 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 watch out though, if they're not here yeah, on yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Zeus, that guy is actually the father, bro. In, in, that, in that clip. Sure. That's the craziest shit I've seen so far. Donald 50! Yeah, he's alive. Yeah, he's alive. On left, on left. Okay. Yeah, on left. So yeah, so overall, normally I'm not a fan of this kind of rat call. And doing this. But I think they're in a situation where they absolutely need to. They just need a big game. We're getting help from over there. We're getting help from over there. Huh? We need to get ahead. We have low meds though. Yeah. Okay. I only push readers. I don't have a lot of meds. Yeah, I push readers as well. Also, on the flip side, in this situation, I think sometimes you just gotta man up. Like, this isn't a fight where, like, it's not a good fight. You should take this height. But if you're gonna go through all this, like, I think you kind of just have to force the issue a little bit stronger. They didn't really have a great opening to do so, but... We'll see how it ends here. I'm just running ahead. 
I don't see anything over there. Curse CC team, so it's nice to get a way higher level than me. Yeah, I try to be a pretty I'm relatively sorry. open book. Um, I think at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, the, when it comes to like when you're thinking of it in the in the context of Apex, this is something I tell a lot of. Uh, I say almost all of my VOD reviews corrupts, is that most teams will will put too much, um blame on something that happened immediately to them that killed them instead of thinking about like most mistakes that you make on in every competitive scenario in every competitive game of apex most of the mistakes you make truly are in zones one to three somewhere in between there right um yeah you maybe lost a fight because you whiffed or somebody just was kind of lost in a fight i don't know for whatever reason you could lose a fight for you got shot in the back or something um a lot of people even in pro league a lot of teams at the highest level even will blame too many things on the the, the the shit that happened immediately instead of thinking about what happened what got them there to set it up right that's like my biggest advice for cc teams and anyone aspiring to be pro is stop thinking about like yeah you should analyze the fight that you lost or something or the rotate that you fucked up but go back really and look through everything from zones one to three did we pick up the right weapons to play the zone that we're playing right was our macro plan overall clear uh did we execute it uh well did we need to change something maybe we went too fast maybe we should have rotated a little bit slower all obviously without doing it in hindsight is the big one um but zones one to three is where most of your problems actually happen most people don't realize it which is why i'm saying which is why i was saying right here like i don't like that play like, yeah, they have a lot of time, and the zone's very big still. But it could fuck up... It, it, it can easily fuck up their uh, timings here, and may, might not be able to give them a spot to play here yeah, soon. Yeah, across here. Yeah. Are they in fragment, I think? No, I can't see them. I see fragment. I'm just taking space left out here. Stay here for a second. No bangle, oh, huh? We're good. No bangle for a long ass time. Yeah, I don't have a blood either. Okay. We're fine, though. We can fly into this one later. Team across the zip line. Yep. Obviously, in this scenario, the ratting didn't hurt them too much, but it's kind of like, um... Uh, it kind of comes at an opportunity cost still, though. You know, had they gotten here faster, could they have maybe gotten an even better spot? Probably not from their POI, right? But you never know. Are we getting shot or they getting shot? We could technically look at it on the map, but it's information that's not really available to them, so it's not really super worthwhile. Unless you're actually in the Alliance room, Vod reviewing. Okay, on the package, just, no, just gas on him. Justin Bieber. We just take, yeah, they're on the way. He's open. So, but we have to leave that. Don't say that. Hard to fight because they have Tabor. Yeah. Okay, so obviously we could look at the map and maybe and like deduce. Could things have been differently? And we might do that after this. But this is what I'm saying. Like they did that little rap play, didn't get anything out of it, only lost stuff, but they also lost timing. We could actually go back, uh, I don't know where they die here, but we could, we'll, we'll probably go back and see could they have potentially gotten something else had they not ch uh, chosen to do that play. Again, I don't hate that they did the play, I kind of just hate that they didn't get anything out of it. Um, sometimes... Sometimes you just gotta full send it. If you, you, you know, sunk cost fallacy type shit. R9 one clip is hedonistic. Most learned and well read Apex chatter of all time, right there. I'm 92%. I think you. I think both of you play bottom, maybe. Yes, everything is unlocked on land, Krebs. You can choose whatever you want. Any skins you want. Including heirlooms and all that. Which is funny, because in the old. In the days of old. Sorry, a bit of a tangent here. In the days of old. Back in my day when I competed, uh, you didn't actually have that. You didn't have everything unlocked, but they gave you, like, enough packs to get everything. And I remember my teammate in Poland, because I played in Poland, if, they, if you guys didn't know that. Um, and uh, my teammate in Poland, was he was our Wraith player. His name was Turns. He was trying so hard to get the Wraith heirloom, he had to go through almost, I think it took him, like, 490 packs. I got mine on LAN, very first pack. The very first pack I opened, I got Wraith Heirloom on land. My man had to go through 400 packs plus to get his. And I got mine on the very first one. I, I, I thought that shit was hilarious. He was sitting there for like 10 minutes just opening packs. I opened my first one up and I got it. <laughs> I wasn't even the Wraith player back then. I was the Watson player.
Uh, good times, man. Good times. I'm Poland is actually a cool land. Like it was very, no one knew what the fuck was gonna happen, and it was very like jank compared to what it is now. The Poland was a good time, man. Oh yeah, my other teammate was six. He was a former Hundred Thieves coach. I don't. He's not really involved in Apex anymore. I think he kind of got away from it. But my other former teammate, he got it from like the free like level. You know, you used to get it for like, or I guess you still do get it for like certain levels. You got packs. He got it on like day one or two for his like level 20 pack. And he didn't even know it was special. He thought like everyone got it and he just got to his first. Meanwhile, everyone's coming to his stream like, what the fuck is that knife? Where did you get it? They're like, he's like, I don't know. I just got it in a pack. Imagine having that luck when Apex first dropped. You just got it within like the first 20 levels. Literally, he was so confused why no one knew what it was. <laughs> Imagine being that blessed. I think my first heirloom, I think, was around 400, like, 10 packs. It's a different team. No them. Oh, it's actually them, it's actually them. It's good. It's good, it's good. It's good. Yeah. At level 25, season 0, yeah. I mean, some people just got it all, man. Careful, they're landing on you. Some people just actually live life on recruit difficulty. Watching up, watching up. Yeah, 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 jump, 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 jump. That is actually very dumb. I understand why this team did that. I mean, I obviously don't know their perspective. Maybe there was literally nothing open. But... That is actually really... <sighs> Surprised they weren't all up there. But either way, that's really dumb. Um, generally, they landed up there because there's a solo. Maybe they thought there, that it was actually a solo. Um, and they thought they could just kill him. But now... Now they do the... the, the this, this problem is huge in Comp Apex. It's not like a game problem, but... You have a, a, play, a place like this tower, and then people... Even though one of the spots is available, either below or above, somebody, and you're occupying one of them, somebody will try to take the other one because they just have nowhere else to play, and now you're just going to probably likely get both of your, both of your teams killed. Um, this is one of the most uncomfortable spots to be in an Apex, when another team just chose to stack on you. Again, sometimes they just have to. Sometimes they don't have another option. But it's a very annoying problem to have, because it's just like, it's very hard to rotate out of. Because likely, like, so, like, you can do this rotate out of the bottom area and get away from them, right? There's a lot of cover and, and line of sight to block, uh, leaving this bottom area. But the problem is, if you happen to get into any kind of fight in the area, they're just going to mirror you. So it's like, it's like the first team that moves loses. Think that was Fnatic? Yeah. Nothing was, like, a bad play on their part. It's like I said, sometimes you just have to make that play. But what you do after definitely dictates yeah. how good or not it, how good or not it was. Yeah. Oh, my next killed me. Slept weird, and now I can't look to the right without pain. Uh, we use team speak on land. Yeah, shoot this guy off of. Hey, thank you, Certified Bambo. I also love the name. I think that name yeah, is hilarious. I know, I know. I'm <laughs> Appreciate you. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for stopping by. Let's go. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Go. Have a great rest of your evening. Oh, I agree, Kala. I was talking to a lot of the casters. I was telling them I, I really like how this... Ooh. I like how a lot of this land... That's actually a gnarly dead slide. I like how a lot of this- this land just felt, like, so scrappy compared to other lands, in like a good way, right? Like, I like that teams are starting to contest- that you started see, uh, seeing teams contest, and teams just doing whack shit, that everyone else is too afraid to do. Um, because I think it actually worked pretty well. Okay. Um... So, even though- I, I'm assuming they die here. Let's see. Obviously, Akis goes down. Not opposed to that cost of cult. Sucks that they can't use it immediately on their rotate, but they kind of needed to. They kind of needed that team to fuck off a bit. Uh, it was Logitech corrupts, and their computers were honestly. Alright, we can talk about it a sec. But, um. 
I was very surprised at the computers that they were. I don't know if it w what was in the sponsorship deal, obviously, but I was surprised at the uh, the types of uh, computers that were on land compared to the Alienware ones. The Alienware ones are goats. Okay. <laughs> that sucks. Um. Again, so this is like like yeah, you could you could harp on a lot of this here and be like yeah, this is bad, that was bad, etc. This decision making was bad. But again, I think this is one of those, and we'll go back and look at the map right now. I think this is just one of those situations where the I think the mistakes were made zones one to three. You know, if you if you play poor macro in zones one to three, eventually it'll come back to bite you, and it's gonna make your game much worse. Um, and then you'll die where it doesn't feel good to die, like in this case. Hawk is to get hit with a gnarly dead slide, but I kind of actually want to look at it again. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember. It's the comms or the comms happen before the actual gameplay, right? This is another, again, this is another reason why I just don't really like, I don't like Hawks on the Hound, even though, even though despite everything that I said, I don't like Hawks on the Hound. Um, maybe it feels better for their team, maybe they do better with it, but like, it feels a little unnatural. But, um, I just also feel like ability placement is super important on Bang, and if your MK player is on Bang, it's a little easier to do that. Not saying Effect, I don't think Effect had some bad smokes here. Wait, let me see. Let's go. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I'm smoking them in the bangle too. Let's go. Ready? I wish I could. What is he bangle too? Wait, I saw this earlier back in thermal. Why do teams drop evacs next to fixed balloons, take the evac, then die when it gets shot out? Um. Are you are you saying so they drop them next to a balloon, and you're saying they take the evac the full way? Give me a specific example, Impo, because there are certain reasons, but I, I, I need to know. Oh. Um, well, generally speaking, when you go up the... I believe evacs are much faster going up the rope. And also, the flight trajectory is different on balloons versus evacs. One, going up a normal balloon takes a lot more time. You're slower and you... They're generally higher than evacs, right? So you're spending much more time on the rope, which means much more time that you can die. Um... So evacs are faster, plus the flight trajectory is different. Um, you, you can generally scale more land with a normal balloon, because it's a little bit higher, but your vertical uh, speed is much faster coming off a balloon, so you can go, you can actually go pretty far. You can't fly the same way that you normally would, but you can actually go pretty far uh, if you need to go like uh, horizontally. Did I say vertically? I meant horizontally. So, but most of the time it's just because you go up faster, you go faster up the rope. But, anyways. I know. I'm smoking them in the bingle too. Yeah. Let's go. Ready? Yeah, go. Let's go. Crossing. 40 on him. I'm crossing for you. I'm holding for you. Alright, follow. Yeah. You can cross now. You can cross now. Come, come, come. We're holding. Yeah, I'm holding. I'm putting balloon close. Yeah, I don't like the, um... Maybe take it. I got something. Yeah, you need to look for me. I'm probably dead. I'm probably dead. I don't know why Hawkins was so far behind on that. I, mean, I know he's he's holding for them there, but like I feel like he spent way too much time. I feel like he should have crossed with the utility as opposed to like you don't need to hold here when there's utility going out. There's both smokes and a bangle. Like if they peek through this, they're fucking they're insane. Popping dog here is, is an option as well. I think generally you want to save it. It's not like the best idea. Like, he didn't know he was going to die here, right? But I do think he should have just... I, I think he should have saved dog and just rotated with their utility. I know he was trying to hold for them, but there's no reason to hold for them if you're using your utility to cross. And then also, again, this might just be like... I, I, don't, I don't know how long he was on Hound. But this could be a lack of hound experience. Generally, if you're playing a character with no mobility, the, the people that know how to play no mobility characters are very good at knowing what they can and can't cross. See, like, Fun, for example. Um, fun is always very good about, like, hey, I'm going to need a smoke here before I cross. Um, so not saving a smoke for his own cross here is a little... Like, their utility usage was not good. He could have survived this cross tenfold, even without using uh, his own hound ult. 
Um, I think this cross- I think this- the execution on this cross was not very good. Um, not using the utility when it's there, and then also not having a smoke for him to cross is bad. Again, these are just the small things that happened here. I think they're- they're- I think they're dead on this rotate regardless. <laughs> I think there's just not enough time for them to make a play where another team is not just gonna shoot at them for free that's already in zone. So for that, that's like the immediate shit that they fucked up. For that, I kinda wanna go back on the map and look back to when they did their rat stuff. Because that is ultimately probably where the mistakes were. Again, they did it because they needed to. They need points, so I don't blame them fully for doing it. But I, I kind of hate that they just didn't get anything out of it. That's where it's like, this is a massive waste of time. Um... So yeah, you see from like, okay. I don't remember exactly where the play call was, but I'm gonna just go off- I'm just gonna go off for the map. So right here, I think this is right where they start, okay? Um... Look at what is open right now, okay? There's a team top epi. Most teams are pretty much- a lot of teams are fucking- holy shit, I didn't realize how many teams are holding around the bridge. There's a ton of teams here. But either way, um... There's a lot of potential options for them to go in. I don't think they know about this zone. I could be wrong about that. But there's still a lot of options, right? Obviously, it's going to take them a little time to get there. But this is about... Uh, they don't have the time around here. I don't know. But it, it'll, it'll probably take them about 30 seconds to, like, rotate to this general area if they were just running. So, let's see, let's see what that looks like. I wish they had the time around here. I know I can just go back in the other rod, but I'm lazy. Okay. So, I've jumped about ahead about 15 seconds already. There's another five, on top of the times we've seen. But as I'm jumping up, you look, you still see them down here. You see a mid leave top epi. A mid's now- a mid is- oh, which I like this. A mid is actually choosing to play a space, a spot that cucks a lot of other rotates, right? Has sight lines on this. Um, so people can't really play up here that well, or can't think to play over here. Pretty much cucks all of this area, uh, which I like. I like this spot a lot better than top epi. I think they hit console and- they were just waiting to hit console and they played this. This is a strong spot to play from. At least early. Well, it's a little risky to play from early, but they don't have a lot of teams around them, which makes it just fine, I think. Okay, so Lions, they start getting in their little fight, but they don't really hard commit to it, which I hate that. I wish they did. It's not- it's a little bit awkward, I know. But if you're gonna make this play, like, you might want to commit to it, otherwise you get nothing out of it and you've lost so much timing on your push. Or on, uh, you've lost so much timing on your, uh, rotate. Okay. They dance around a little bit, nothing happens, they end up peeling, they end up running. Okay, they get up here. I don't like that they opted to go into epi, personally. Because if- I mean, they can like- I mean, they can scout, like, they can see no one's here, right? Like, if anything, they can scout this bridge and- and like, maybe walk up, scan the bridge here, and play the bridge. The bridge is not- not bad, especially in zone 3, when the back is closed. I'm very surprised they go, chose to go into epi. I don't remember, maybe they're going for console scan, which is understandable. I don't think you need console scan at this point. <laughs> I think at this point anyone could- uh, or any of these players would know where it's roughly ending. So, I don't like the call to go into epi. I think that's- that's a lot of it. Okay, I see. So Moist takes it. But look at that. Look how long it took Moist to actually get into that spot. Which is not- not saying it's like poorly played by Moist. It's, it's good timing by Moist. But this is what I'm saying, like... Moist has just been sitting Overlook forever, right? As long as all of this shit was happening, Moist is just an overlook, right? If Alliance were here earlier, okay, like let's just, let's pretend this shit didn't exist. Let's just say Alliance was holding this and making sure, watching their back, making sure nobody is out there, right? It, they will see this balloon from Omit, and they will see that Omit leaves this spot, which means this spot is now open. Hermit crab, baby. It's a great principle. The shell, the bigger shell is now left on the ground. They can ditch their small shell. So, they could look to make a play to move into this. But by the time they get to the point where they can actually do this, Moist is already moving in there, right? So, again, I don't hate this play, but the fact that they got nothing out of it means that if, if you aren't ready to commit massive balls on the table to the play, right? You ain't ready to sugar, throw your nutsack on the table and go all in, then you shouldn't be making this kind of play to begin with, I think. Personally. Because otherwise, you're just wasting time and you're fucking up your macro later. Because ultimately, like I said, what gets them killed over here is the fact that they have nothing to play. And they're just going spot to spot, praying to God something can happen or they get a zone flip. So, they play here earlier, they have a lot more options, they can do a lot more. And get a bigger game. 
I would like this play a lot more if they actually ended up killing Fnatic, but they didn't even try it. They, 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 I think Hawkins got almost near cracked and then just went away from the play. Uh, and I don't like that. I think you either go all in one way or the other. You don't half-ass either of them. So, again, a lot of that could be, go back to the last game where I was talking about, a lot of it could just be the failures of the LAN, right? Like, they did very well throughout the LAN, but the games where you do bad can have an impact on you. And they can change the way you call as an IGL. They can change the way your team plays. Because you're just, when, when you've tried so many different things and nothing's working, trust me, it's a very frustrating fucking place to be. It's a, like, all of a sudden, it feels like you forgot how to play the game. So... Unfortunate showing from Alliance. I think this is uh, the team looked good. They always look good in the early stages of it. I want them to bring home. I want them to get like a top three. I don't think they've had one technically. I think fifth is maybe their best, if I remember correctly. But either way, this team is far too talented. I, I want them to do really well on the land. Um, I was hoping it was going to be this one, but hope, uh, maybe next. But either way, um, that's probably going to cut it for the Alliance VOD review. Uh, Rain, if you're out there, if you're listening, if I'm right monitor content, pretty much said all I need to say. That will be on YouTube in the coming days. Um, shout out Rain, the goat. Um, yeah, any questions? Did I miss anything that people had a question on? Next will probably be TSM. We'll figure out why they disbanded. Uh, I see Hawkins uh, thought best case scenario cover fire for his team up top because of what he opened up worst case scenario. Oh, you're talking about the last game? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Looking for your team to cross is good, but it's pointless when it's like they're tripling up on their rotate strength, right? They're, they smoked it. They bang ulted it. And then he's also shooting when he didn't really need to. It's just a little bit inefficient and it, I think it fucked his cross up pretty bad. Like, if you're, do if you're already bang smoking and ulting, it's because you're trying to use that to rotate. But he didn't rotate. Um, I get, like, I get his reasoning, but I, I think as the Hound player, you can't, you, as the Hound player, you gotta be the one, that's also one point I should make, actually. As a Hound player, you gotta be the one going with the utility, and if anything, your bang is the one that stays back and shoots for you, because your bang has capability to, uh, to escape with, with passive, right? The Hound is not the one that's anchoring for them for them to move. That's the guy that that's the motherfucker that needs to go. And I think that's a little bit of bleed over of him playing a lot of bang. <sighs> Fuck my neck, man. I, that's actually a, a good question to make a point that I forgot to make. Throw that one in there as well, Rain. If you're hearing this. <clears throat> okay. I don't usually ask questions, but I'm curious. How do you tend to balance picking when to fight and when to not? Because I'm usually gun shy, but play with people who love running down squads. Um if you're gun shy, if that is the reason you don't like to fight, then I will say you should get into the natural. You should get into the habit of wanting to fight more, because gun shy is not. If gun shy is the reason you don't want to fight, that's not a good reason. You're going to get run over it the higher lobbies you get into. Um, one of the best ways I learned to play BR was good old fucking PUBG, baby. Hot dropping military uh, island. Or hot dropping Pachinki, the streets where I was raised. That l taught me so much about BR fighting. It taught me so much about learning how to play, like how to play aggressively and how to play the game. And I think that's I think that's one reason. I mean, people just love hot dropping in Apex. But if if you're avoiding fights because of just purely being gun shy, then you need to get rid of that trait fully, straight up. I did also drop school. Yeah, school Pachinki military. Island, I forget what the area was called. I used to call it C dot. I forget what it's actually called. Um, and then, uh, fuck, the place above school, north of school, Rozak. Oh yes, I used to coin. I used to call myself the Lord of Rozak. Grew up in Pachinki, Lord of Rozak. Uh, school was just school, but yeah, that is like the big thing about like if you have that, if you are gun shy in any BR. You need to, you genuinely need to just hot drop more and you need to get used to fighting more because that being gun shy is not a good reason to not fight because that means the teams that aren't gun shy that are more confident than you are just are generally going to run you over. Um, if you don't want to fight because something's a bad fight, then that's just different. That's because that's you knowing BR smarts and, and understanding what's a good and bad fight or at least what you think is. 
Yeah, you wouldn't last an hour in the asylum where I was raised. And it's just a screenshot of Pachinki. I love Pachinki, bro. Pachinki off drops are so good. The map's different now, right? Isn't Aaron Gold completely reworked in PUBG? I haven't played in forever. I've been meaning to play PUBG. I like going back to the game every now and then for like an hour, then getting mad and getting off. What's not process behind Moist not instantly going for zone because they have prio? Um, or because they have prio right. Yeah. So generally, um, when you want to play a strong spot, I talk about this concept a lot. And it's not necessarily... When you're playing for... Um, hey, let's, let's look at Moist, for example. All right. So they're dropping stacks, big mod. They know, they see the zone right away. They're not going to have prio to the zone, right? So generally, when you don't have prior to zone, you want to try to go for a spot that can guarantee at least a zone 3 or zone 4 or rotate for you. So what that means here, in this case, is they're playing the height of overlook, right? They're playing this entire area, because this allows them to see everything in this, or everything um, in this general direction. Like this, like here-ish. Actually, I mean, we could like technically go like all the way out here, but everything in this general, like this general direction. And why that's good is because if a team happens to want to squeeze in here or like rotate into this, then they can shoot them off, they can stop them. Or once these, the zones are completely closed and no one's on their back, they want to walk in and they know they have a free isolated fight. So playing, they're playing a strong a, a spot that's not in zone, but it's a strong spot for them to guarantee their next rotate and make, make it very uncomfortable for anyone that wants to play in front of them. If that makes sense. It's a very basic uh, concept of... Basically, the, the way you come to the decision here of knowing whether or not you should do this is, is the spot that I want to play abusable? If the answer is yes, then you want to play the next, strong, next strongest spot that can overlook that spot. So once the zone closes, the spot is no longer that abusable. Does that make sense? Yes, that will be on the quiz. Do you think something like mixtape or solos could replace the hot drop in fight, or do you need, do you need the context of trios? Nah, I think no matter what zone, what, no matter what mode you put in, people are going to want to hot drop Impa. It's just natural. People just, uh, people at the end of the day just enjoy shooting their gun. A lot of people don't enjoy loot, the looting aspect of BRs, but they love the gunplay of Apex. Yeah. Um, if that's all for the current questions, we can run it back, run it over to TSM, and figure out why they disbanded. 